Okay, hello everybody. Today's podcast I have as my guest Omar von Mueller. And um, I, I will let him introduce himself as always I do, just so I don't miss on things. Um, <laughs> we've been trying for quite some time to make this happen and finally the stars aligned. So here we are. I'm going to pass the mic to Omar. Uh, just kind of, I know, I, I know the people that listen to my podcast, some people are very, very aware of who you are and what you do, and I'm sure some people are not. I should say before we even started, even in um, um, like my school for dog trainers, mm -hmm. I have a bunch of clips of you, especially when we're talking about shaping and talking about some, some specific dog training approaches, you know you mm -hmm. always come to mind and a very good example. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, yeah, so while, uh, um, just give me, give me a little bit about yourself. I'm gonna make one ready for the big event because I'm so happy. Okay, I don't have that one. Okay, good deal. Uh, well, my name is Omar Van Mueller. Uh, as you all know, professional dog trainer. Been training dogs since I was a tiny little kid. Uh, Never went to college right after high school when uh, when I moved to Miami, then I found out that you could become a dog trainer and make a living out of it. And uh, 19 years old and uh, never looked back doing this for over 40 years. And uh, it's just something that I really, really, really like. It's something that I just, my passion is my love. I find myself very, to be very successful at what I do. And when I mean successful, I don't mean about making money. Some people, that's what they want. But I define being successful as something that you like, you enjoy, you live. And the day you die, if I, I probably be, probably that, that, I'm probably going to have a dog next to me. So it, in other words, I had a great life. I enjoyed every second of it. And it's all because of dogs. That's, that's just pretty much what it is. And animals. I, I like to play with different animals today, yeah. but mainly dogs. Yeah. So we, you and I, it's weird how we we go we cross paths in a very crazy way like you you would be in miami i'm in california you moved to california i moved to florida yeah, yeah. right about the same time always um you did you did some something with the police dogs back in the early 90s right then mm -hmm. then you did some shoots hunt, then you did some ring sport i mean you you did a lot of the working sport yeah. protection dogs right yes yes and I loved it, yeah. So, yeah. And so, how, where was that shift? What, what, something clicked, and you really, really got into the, the, the pet tricks and the shaping and right. the movies. Right. And well, I, mean, I mean, the uh, since I was a kid, that's what I loved. I mean, Lassie, Renton, and all the shit that they did. I will go out and teach my dogs. Everybody knows it. I, I tell the story all the time. But uh, since I was a kid, that's what I did. I loved it. Lo loved all kinds of different behaviors on dogs. Even when I started training shoots on my Malinois and everything, they, they knew all kinds of tricks. So it's just uh, it's just a way of uh, playing with the dog, getting the dog to understand you and, and have a good connection and, and, and do different things. You know, it's just like I said, I love the sports, but, but I also love to do different tricks. You know, like, like when we did uh, with my dog Carlo, we were doing tracking. Uh, this this dog never learned to track with food, never ever. Everything that I all the tracking that I did with him was with toys, bearing toys, and retrieving toys, and so it became a really cool thing that he really liked. And he was a hundred hundred point tracker, and he was methodic because I was bearing the object, so so he really had to search for for the for the yeah. for the object, and he will retrieve it. So it doesn't matter what kind of a that was his reward. His reward was to get the the object and bring it to me, show it to the judge, and keep going. So it was it was different, but it was fun, you know. Like doing the blinds, I used to teach a dog to go around the blind twenty times, you know, just go stay barking around the blind and come back. So just doing different things that that they were fun, not just for me, but for the dog. Right, and different well, things is a very very good way to say it because it's like a you know just just staying in the structure all the time versus mm -hmm. opening a door and, and freeing yourself and experimenting and and doing something right. the way 
your brain, you, you're trying to, okay, how would I do it? I know how everybody else would do, but how would I do it, right? Exactly. That's what it is, yeah. It's just try to look outside the box and, and figure a different way. You know, it's like, I, I never, I, I mean, I've seen a lot of trainers and do different things, but I like, I like to think my way of doing something. If I see a dog doing something, oh, that's a really cool trick. But I really don't want to know how this person did right. it. I, I want to figure out how I'm going to do it. It's, it's come to, and, and I'm going to try to make it different. I don't like to copy behaviors. I like to make them a little bit different. Eh? And I like to make them better. Let me just put it that way. If I see something, doing the dog doing something, I want to do it. But I want to make it better. So I'm going to try to figure out how to do it. And most of the time it works. Sometimes, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes you think that doing something is, that's how it's going to be. And, and it turns out that it's not. But in the process, you learn how to do it. And so, and you learn something that you didn't know that it was going to happen. And then, then it's, uh, it's usually a pretty good success. It's just because you're playing with the dog's head and you're learning at the same time. So. Yeah. So how, um, man, I'm, I'm going to have a lot of questions. How, how, I know you start pretty early with, I mean, when you have a chance, right? When you have yeah. a, a chance, you would start with a very young puppy and you already would expose him or her. Uh, but you, you've done it with really with so many different breeds and so many different ages. And it's hard to, um, I mean, anybody that doesn't know, you should just go to, we will post the links to your YouTube videos and social media. I mean, there is no, like I can say, I, I cannot think of a trick that you haven't done. And there is so many cool ones that are really your own trademarks, your own flavors. Right. And right. Um, so when you, when you start with a little guy, what, what are your priorities? When do you... And, and first of all, what, how, how much selection, what, what do you look in? to a dog that you say, okay, that's a, that's a dog I can do a lot of things with. Right. Well, I mean, uh, that uh, we talk about this all the time and uh, on the selection of the, of the, of the dog, uh, I don't do too much selection. Okay. Like, like monkey is like, uh, my, my main dog right now, monkey was a $200 Craigslist, uh, dog. And when I went to pick him up, I didn't look for the dog that was outgoing, the one that was on top of the litter, whatever. I didn't even ask any questions. I went to a dog that was lighter in color. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it was backyard breeding, a bunch of puppies there. And eh, the parents look okay, no big deal. But uh, I went to the light in color. The reason why the light color is because I do studio work. And in studio work, the light color is uh, preferable. Yeah. The, yeah. If it's too dark, then, then it has issues with the cameras and so on. So, so it really doesn't do me too good when I have a dark dog. So I pick the, the light color one, and then it's up to me to raise him, to you know, to teach him, to make him comfortable, to make him uh, uh, sociable. Everything that that needs, needs to be done is up to me to, to do that. Um, I've trained all kinds of different dogs. I mean, since I was a little kid, when I was in high school, I had a I had a Newfoundland. Oh, wow. I had a big, I had a huge big Newfoundland that I raised. <laughs> But uh, when I was in high school, I was, uh, I was a pretty big athlete. I used to run miles a day and then all that kind of stuff. And uh, I read all the books about the Newfoundlands, how they work, how they're working dogs, that they do this and they do that. And that's what I get in my mind. You know, when you read books, sometimes you believe all the crap that they say. And it's like, when you're a kid, you really believe it. So, oh, yeah. So this new fee, since he was eight weeks old, I was doing all kinds of shit with him. I mean, I was taking him here, taking him there, teaching him all kinds of things. This dog was one of the most athletic dogs that you could ever imagine. If I tell stories about this dog, people don't believe me because it's like, how can a Newfie do that? And they have some endurance, uh, the, the healthy ones, right? Yeah. Oh, I, I raised him as an athlete. From day one, he was an athlete. From eight weeks old, he was an athlete. He was swimming. He was taking things out of water. He was everything that I that I read about the Newfies. I was teaching my dog to do. When he was a year old, this dog could jump. They used to call him the flying rod in in, in Florida. Because he'll just fly like 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 he was a Doberman and uh, full of hair, and uh, we used to do a lot of like water rescue on the beach, Miami Beach. You know, I had oh, a blast yeah. with the dog, anyways. But but that showed me from the beginning that it's not so much of a breed or or whatever, but you, you can raise him to be pretty much what you want. Of course, 
genetics play a big round. Big, 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 uh, big thing. If I'm going to have a competition dog for sure, so I'll go to Ivan and I get one of your dogs because that's you going for the for sure thing right there that is the dog is going to have it. I'm not going to go and play around with that. With that. If right. I'm going to compete in Shotsun or ring sport, I'm not going to go and buy a $200 dog and try to compete with that because maybe genetically the dog doesn't have it. So. But you have to test a little bit, or, or I don't know if you even test, because I guess even subconsciously you would <laughs> realize that, you know, like where, where I'm going with this is like, because, I mean, in your, in your type of work, a dog has to be pretty stable, resilient, confident, just as a high-level sport dog, because you, you're putting them in all sorts of situations, and you have the, the lights, the cameras, the effects, the, the anything a movie set asks for. On top of that, what people don't realize is you have to run that same drill probably right. 20 times back to yeah. back until everybody's happy. And right. it's not an easy thing. Um, no, no, it's, it's not. It's not like people think like, oh, they see a dog doing something, and it's like, oh, my dog could do that. That's that's usually not how it works because that took a bunch of shots. They probably did a bunch of twists around and blah blah blah, and then they ended up with the dog just sitting and barking. But that dog probably was working all day doing all kinds of stuff. Yeah. But uh, like you were saying about the selection, uh, but when it comes to studio work, we I try to select dogs that are going to first of all, like I was saying about the colors, how the dogs going to look that kind of stuff, because that's, that's important to get the jobs. Uh, if it's a puppy, I really don't worry too much about it when it's a puppy, because I know what I can bring out of a puppy. If I'm going to rescue a dog that is, yeah, let's say 10 months, 11 months, then the selection comes big time. If I see a dog that at 10, 11 months old is, is showing me signs of uh, too much being too shy kind or too this, things, and that, yeah. that is, it's not even worth it because it's just already there and, and it's, uh, it might be fixable, but you really don't have the time to be doing, you know, to fix it. Might as well. That's why I like to get puppies, you know. Yeah. And like you, you said with the, with the tracking way back, you, you did all with toy, uh, which is, that, that's the cool thing about dog training is to not to stay, stay confined and, and dare to experiment and, and try something else. And a lot of times it's, it's actually more gratifying. Mm. Um, with the with the the dogs for the movies, from all I, from what I've seen you do, a lot of it in in at least in the beginning is very food based, correct? Yes, a lot of food based. That's and and pretty much kind of typical training would be just really teaching the dog to follow a lure very comfortably. That right. w- that would be your first step, right? Yes, it's a, it's a, I try to feed by hand as much as I can. This this these pouches are like my best friends I have. Uh, even even uh, customers' dogs, I put the food down and and, and I go straight to it. Uh, I believe that with food, you, it's a lot easier to manipulate a dog into doing just about anything you want because uh, it's easier to manipulate. This is it's not as crazy. Yeah. So and. Once the dog learns the behavior and whatever, then then I then I can wean him from food, and then I can use toys or whatever. Then if I need to bring up high drive, then then I'm going to change it from the food to the toy. But in order to teach the dog to do something, it's so much easier just to use the food because uh, uh, the dog doesn't is not going to be that crazy, you know. So like if I need yeah. a dog to go and knock down a, a painting or something, it'll take me two seconds to go and show him. I say, look, you touch it with your nose, you drop it. And I give you a reward, and and then I just repeat it two, three times, and boom, it's done. So yeah, it, yeah, definitely food motivation is really good. But then again, also is about that the dog understands what you're saying because uh, a lot of my dogs, uh, I don't need to use food anymore to teach stuff. I use it because it's good to get rewards and so on. But the dog already knows good from bad. So a lot, a lot of behaviors that I'm teaching to my dogs is just like a. Uh, a good praise with the dog, yep. play with the dog, good boy, whatever, you know. And if the dog is messing up, all I have to say is, hey, no. Then the dog gets it right away. Like, oh, not that way, but this one. That's it. And then, so. That kind of leads to the question that I have. Um, where, on average, the dog begins to 
understand, okay, this is not just about me chasing food. You and I are actually doing cool things and I'm becoming very keen to watching you and doing things together with you. Where, where is that break point happen normally? Well, it's, 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 uh, it's pretty simple because uh, there's people that, that do food reward, but it's a little bit of too much food reward. It's like... I don't like I don't like doing that. I like You're almost eating. hiding behind the food that don't ever get to see you, no, right? I, no, exactly. No, I I use a lot of food, let's say for for new behavior. I want a new behavior, so I'm gonna repeat it, ba 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 ba, and the dog gets it. Then the dog is get. Then I'm gonna pull back the food. Then I'm gonna, then the dog is gonna do two, three, four behaviors, and then he gets a treat. And then four, five, six. Like a lot of people in the studio work. Uh, if you see them training uh, when they're working with their dogs, it's like every second. I mean, the dog is sitting on a stay and the cameras and everything. He's, wait, wait, I got to pay the dog. And he said, he said, I don't do that. My dog is going to do 10, 20 behaviors. A and sequence. Then it's yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's just, uh, and the dog knows that when he's performing those behaviors, it's something that I like, that we're having a good time together. And, and he's wagging his tail and I'm wagging my head. <laughs> but it's, uh, it's about, I think, I think it has to be with easy pulling back the food. Pulling back the food and using a lot of reward, like talking, touching, kissing. I love kissing my dogs, doing all kinds of stuff. Yeah, there. and that's it, you know, so it's the, so the it, it's the the total interaction really that makes it cool. Exactly. Yeah, and the way you talk to them, the way you interact, the way you touch touch uh, touch them, pet them, and all that kind of stuff. You know, the way you play with them. I mean, I can go out with monkey right now to the yard, and and and, and just as soon as I come out, I, I say, let's go outside. He's jumping up and down like like if like if I have a ball or a toy. Nothing. I have nothing. It's just right. me playing with the dog and he's healing pretty and, and doing back flip and the flip finishes and all that stuff. And it's just me and him having a good time. That's it. And let's go back in. You know, that's it. No food, no reward, no toys, nothing. Me, I am the reward by playing with the dog. Correct. And 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 as we said, the interaction, I'm I'm again, you you tell me, but I, w- I would bet some money that you can take him out and come up with some trick that is not complicated, but it's new to him. And you will not really need any food reward. And just the fact that the two of you are going to solve the puzzle, so to speak, will be exactly. plenty of reward for both of you, not just for him. Yeah, exactly. exactly. It, it's, it, it happens all the time. We do it all the time. Like I said, it's sometimes we use food, and sometimes because because you want to, you want to keep the dog focused in what you're doing right there. So I said the food works really well with that. Like you you're right there, does it, boom, you reward him, and that's it. So it works really good with that. But it, there has been many times where it, there has been times where I don't studio work that I forget to take my treats and or mm. my toy, and it's like, oh shit, that, that's okay, no big deal. Just go and, 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 and do it. I can grab a stick. I'll get a stick, put it in my pocket, and it's like, okay, go play or whatever. And he does what he's supposed to be doing. So it's it's about the communication and the bond that you have with your dog. That's pretty much the, the bottom line. So for you, what will be like the the most important in your field of work? Not not we'll get to like pet training and stuff, but like in your field of work, what are the most important key commands or cues that they they have to be super solid understanding them yeah i mean uh actually the, the usually the, the 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 main things that we use for basic studio work is just really good obedience for once i mean really good like you stay you you whatever you go at the dog has to stay in the kind of stuff uh the change of position sometimes speaking is very important Mm-hmm. Speak is something that uh, that it comes up quite a bit, and probably one of the most important things is probably the retrieving, the being able to retrieve anything at any time, and not just to me, to an actor, to this, to that, go and uh, and put it somewhere else or whatever that kind of stuff. Uh, the touching, I find it very, very, uh, very important. The touching with the nose, because you can guide the dog to go to a certain place and 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 be looking that way, like like. Uh, like I can tell the dog to, like I was saying, to touch that frame over there, for example. And so I can put him here and I can tell him, go and touch it, right? So he doesn't touch it. And then, but that's just to set him up. Then I can put him over there and I can tell him, go. But before he gets there, I just tell him, stay. 
and he's going to stay straight looking at that because he thinks that I'm going to tell him to touch the, the frame. And from them, I can tell him to sit, speak, whatever you want, and he's going to be looking at the at the frame right. because because that's that's where I told him to focus. And then I just go and tell him, okay, go touch it. And then he goes touch it. And then I gave him a reward. So he did all these behaviors just by by uh, doing that. Uh, another thing that we use a lot is the marks. I I cannot uh, express how important to each marks it is. I start with big tables like that. that they go, can go in there. They go to a smaller one, to a smaller one, and then comes to a point where they have to go and stand on a mark. And I find it really good because when you teach dogs to work on marks, you teach them to walk work away from you. You don't mm-hmm. need to be next to a dog, teach him to tell him to do things. It's just like, go to a mark, it'll be 30 feet away from you. The dog goes, steps on it, he can turn around, flip, be pretty, whatever. It is done. Then go to the next mark. So I teach that really, really good. And uh, I, because I love it. Since day one, I start with that. And uh, it can come situations where, uh, like with uh, Jumpy, the one that died, he was like the best yeah. studio dog ever in yeah. life. Uh, I would, he could be outside a room and I can go and show him and I will have just to touch a carpet, the carpet on the floor. Now, I could put a, usually put a little piece of tape, tiny little piece, and he'll nail it every time. But sometimes the, the tape is on camera, so you don't want to. And I will just touch it with my scent on the carpet. Mm-hmm. And I just go and tell him, go to the mark. And he'll go really quick, smell it, and, and get on the mark. The second time, he doesn't even have to smell it. He knew exactly where it was. And and I could change it. That's a good thing about him was that it could be a mark here. And they say, oh, now, now we want it three feet in the, to the left. It's like the people are thinking, oh, shit, I already told him to go there. No, 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 big. just go and teach him on that side. And, and that was it. So It's uh, crazy it's, how far it can go, like almost to the point that you think that that probably may work, may not work. And then the dog is like, yeah, I got it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I get it. With your dogs, like I, I don't know all of your dogs, like I, as much as I follow, I know Ugi, he, he got the, he got his pawn, the Hollywood Boulevard, yeah. right? From, yeah, yeah. From they, they still, they still haven't put it out on the, on the floor oh. because the Kodak theater got bought by somebody else or whatever. Last I heard his, his prints are still in the back because they have a bunch of slabs with a bunch of uh, celebrities. They have put their, their hands, but they have not brought it out in front of the theater yet. But uh, yeah, he was the first dog that did the, the pause on the, on the, on the Chinese theater on the, on the country. So that was, a, that was a big thing for us. Yeah, that's insane. How different were they? Like, like, I know with me every time somebody would ask me about my, all of my dogs that I've competed with and it's a difficult question. And sometimes I feel very comfortable talking and come up with things. And sometimes I'm like, I, I don't know what to say. But like, how, how different was Monkey to Jumpy to uh, Oogie? Like, I mean, they're different breeds. They're, and your level of training evolves. And I mean, there's so many components, right? Yes, yes, yes. But, and, and that's like you were saying, yeah. You get, you get that question asked a lot, and it's like, you know what, when I had Carlo, I was 20 some years old. I knew so much. For my knowledge, he was the best dog in the world because that's what I could do at that age, what the, my experience would take me there. Then the next dog, I had no experience. I did more, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And so on. So it goes up and down like that. When, But then the people ask me about Jumpy and Monkey and Huggy. And, and, and A lot of people ask me this. And uh, so far for me, Jumpy was the best. So far, this dog was just crazy incredible. I mean, monkey is incredible too, but Jumpy was just way, way, way more special than, than, than he was. It's in just like in what way? That he just knew what he was doing or? or? Yeah. As, as an all around dog, as mm-hmm. an all around dog that I could just, anything that I wanted to teach him right there on the spot, it doesn't matter where he was. I, if, if I had to teach, if I had to teach, if I had to teach Jumpy, let's say something crazy. Like a like a like a rope ladder, right? And go up a hundred feet. Mm-hmm. He would just do it. He'd probably fall and whatever, but he would just do it. He yeah. would just go and do it. All I have to do is show him one, two, three, get behind and say, go, 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 and he'll do it. Monkey is not fucking way he's gonna do that. He said, fuck no. <laughs> it maybe 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 monkey is smarter. You know, he's like, I'm gonna fall and it, uh, uh, uses his uh his uh instinct. But uh 
but the trust and and the, and the way uh, I was able to work with John, it was just incredible. Let's just say it was just like talking to another human. It was, it was that good. When do you think they realize, like, let's say you're teaching, I don't know, some something a little more complicated. Let's say the one where you where you put them. Uh, um, well, I don't know, any trick. I don't even want to come up with one of them because there's just so many and so different. But uh, mm-hmm. one of the more kind of complicated bunch of chain behaviors. Mm-hmm. When, when does the dog start to be like, I, I got the whole picture. I know what we are doing now. I think, I think he gets it to when we get to the, to the picture because uh, is, there's always the steps. There's always the steps to follow. Like uh, if I'm going to teach something, I start here. And, and in my mind, I got so many steps that I'm going to follow. And when I get to the end, is when he, when the dog gets it. Well, he gets it as, as as soon as I do. I mean, it's it's just as soon as he knows that that we got there, we got there. Like for example, is uh, the skateboarding. Mm-hmm. I love to teach my dogs to skate, but that's just something really cool. There's a I've I've learned so many different ways for so many different temperaments. Of dogs to teach him how to skateboard, and uh, so uh, you gotta teach him to get on the skateboard, to push the skateboard, to blah blah blah, to to turn, to do whatever you want. So, in the beginning, when I started that, there was no skateboarding dogs. It was like I don't know who actually started the skateboarding thing. At the time, I had a Jack Russell was doing it, and I thought I thought I was the only one doing it, and then a bulldog popped out. Yeah. And then another photo popped out. It was Tyson and then, uh, how's that going on? I forget the other one. But they popped out pretty much at the same time. And uh, I think Tyson was, Tyson is the one that was doing all, all the, all the, all the steering. The, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I was like, shit, freaking dogs can learn how to steer. And then I just got busy. I got busy. That's with when dogs. everybody thought that bulldogs are just bored for skateboarding. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> And uh, no, there's tons of them right now. There's a really nice Malinois. Have you seen a female Malinois that is a really good skater? And uh, all I kinds have of to. Great, all kinds of dogs out there nowadays. But when I started, it was like, oh man, if the dog can just come off a curve of six inches, it was awesome. You know, I was like, oh, I did it. And then I would go to uh, something bigger, something bigger, something bigger. And Jumpy was, in my opinion, with the best skateboard in the world. There's nothing that you can see that I have ever seen that comes close to him. He will go up in a, in a, in a half pipe, yeah. 12 feet high, and 12 feet high the other way, and there was no fear on this dog. He would just drop down the, the, the ball and come back in the other side and turn around, and and he was just the joy of this dog to do it. It was incredible. That's the thing, that joy, just just what you said. It's like there, there is a point that some dogs, they just enjoy. They're not. It's not about the reward anymore. It's like, this is cool. Oh, yeah. It's the joy of doing it. I can, yeah. All of my dogs, I can put a skateboard out there and just let them go. And that's how they're going to have the fun. Just go and skate like until they, until I have to put them away, you know, before they get their pads or, or have a heat stroke because they are just so into it that they will do it. And I think, I think a lot of my experience with Schutzman in the background on, on building up drives and, 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 and rewards to, to what they're doing, then I think it has helped me a lot in the studio work and, and all the tricks that I do because I always build a foundation on the drive of whatever it is, and then I guide the dog into going. Like for yeah. the skateboard, a, I build that drive. I don't care if they go and bite it. I don't care if they want to crack it in half or whatever. I build the drive just like if I'm building uh, to buy a tub or a sleeve or anything like that. And then once the dog gets it, it's like, okay, time to put a little control on the biting, time to put this. And then slowly I bring him up to a point that the dog just enjoys the, like, okay, this is where I was supposed to go. Get on top of it and go. And, and that's it, you know, so it's a lot of fun. You did something recently with Monkey uh, for the, what was the game? The, the Call of Duty. Call of Duty, yeah. Tell, tell me yeah. about that one. That was a, that sounds was like some fun thing. Is it, it out the game yet or no? I'm sorry? Is, oh, yeah, it's out. It's, uh, it's it's out. out. Yeah, it's out. Uh, it's, it's it's just this too, another gig that we got for the for the for the for the business, and the pre, uh, I did it with Tico, Tico and Monkey. Mm-hmm. Uh, is Tico around? Oh yeah, I love Tico. Uh, actually, he's for sale. <laughs> I should get him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I gotta buy it right 
And now, okay, I want a lot of money for him. I mean, I love the dog, but it's just like, with all my dogs that I have, it's just like three Malinois, and so it's, it, I, can, I can use the money. So anyways. How often uh, do you train? Like, like, what what does a day look I'm like from, for somehow, you? Somehow, 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 almost every day. Uh, all depends. Uh, I mean, some guys there are breaks where you don't train for a few days or whatever. But if I am doing something new, which I'm most of the time I'm doing something, then uh, then I train. It's like uh, with monkey, I started the the thing with the putting the ball, the the what's my call it, the the golf ball on the tee. I started that. A few weeks ago, and I worked for about a week, two weeks, and then I stopped. I haven't finished that one. And then I started where he uh, to tumble over, and then now he's getting the message. I actually haven't done it for in about a week, but but uh, I try to almost every day do something. Mm-hmm. It's true. Sometimes can go like about a week, and if I'm busy with my kids, I have kids in soccer and golf right. and all that stuff. So it's uh it's pretty busy sometimes. So so sometimes they don't get a lot of training yeah, for a few days, quite a few days. But how do you find it when they when when the dogs have a little break? Do they get a little too edgy, or does the break do them good? No, because uh, uh, how can I explain this to you? This is not my training. is is something that is just like this is our lifestyle, you know. So it's not it's not. It's not like I'm com- like if I'm training for competition that the dog goes out there. Oh, there's a lot of work, heavy work, obedience, da, 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 da. and then if you give the dog a couple of days break, the dog is like she chills for a couple of days. No, it's this is more like a lifestyle. I get my food, get my treats, or, or go outside, and and we just interact. Interact. Yeah. The the dogs live with me inside the house, anyways. They're gonna sleep next to my bed, anyways, no matter what, every day. So there's not really. The dog will never know that it was actually a break because it's just our lifestyle. So. How do you think it's changing? Just the training, the the, you know, like like I mean, we we go way back, and it's evolving and it's changing. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, I look back and it's just like, wow, <laughs> he has <laughs> it a lot. Has a lot. I'm actually doing a training for this gentleman. And uh, and he was like, uh, he was talking about somebody's uh, technique, methods. And I've heard the name before, but I really don't, I can't remember yeah. who the guy is. And uh, so he has a door, I'm doorman puppy. And uh, so he says, because he trained his dogs before. So he says, I re- okay, so this is like, for example, if the, you tell the dog to stay, and if the dog doesn't stay, you're going to pick him up and lift him up in the air and go and slam him on the floor and tell him to stay, and then you walk away. And I'm like, whoa, no, 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 no. That's, that's, that's old school. That's old-fashioned. You do that shit nowadays, and you go to jail. That's that's not how it works anymore. We're more into motivated motivation and, and treating without being so crazy about the corrections and stuff like that, especially for regular opinions and stuff like right. that. Right, so, right. Yeah. yeah. It, it, I mean that is changing for sure. It's getting training in overall is getting way more intelligently done, and and yes. I think trainers start to realize that there are, you have so many options, yeah. and and the one you just described it's like so far down buried that if you if you even think to dig that one out, knowing everything else is like why <laughs> yeah one one good thing about it nowadays is that we have internet we have this you know podcast like yours and, and everything so new trainers can learn new techniques and, and and know that it's not the way it was before you know so and, and at the same time you know there's a lot of people that just go to straight to positive and stuff like that you know it's not gonna work so it's a good thing that they can listen to everybody and make up their own mind and and figure out how, how to do it correctly. Yeah, in in your training, how how important? And do you even I don't know? Do you have any signal, anything that says to the dog that he's doing something wrong? He's going the wrong way. It's the wrong path. It's oh. the wrong choice. Yeah, did you mean like a correction sound? Yeah, some 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 guidance of so it's not oh, only. Yes. Yeah, I'm very, I'm very clear with my dogs from day one. Good boy and no, period. Right. This is like, 
And and, and uh, the, the no could be just a no, or it could be just my my sound. Uh, I use a lot of like, eh, like sound like it's like a, like a quick buzzer type, no, you don't do that. And they understand it 100%. And it's, a, it's very clear on their head when they're doing something good or something bad. And, and that's that's what makes it so easy once you once you pass the first let's say six months of training from then on that's what makes it so easy to, to do anything yeah I, I agree with you I agree with you I also think that the the negative is just as important as the positive feedback because and everything in life it brings the, and everything in life right it, it brings clarity and it's like the dog actually in a way is thankful that you steer him to the right path Ooh, right yeah. why why try 20 things and may, let the dog make 20 mistakes why there's no reason start from the start from the get-go right right from the beginning is the dog going to do something hey, no you teach them and once they once they know that it's just uh it's easy it's, it's simple yeah More i guess a lot of the trainers that do I mean, the, the, the strictly force-free trainer that would refuse to even have any negative feedback would be, they, they, would, they would think that it becomes, um, yeah, it, you're putting the relationship at risk and it goes down that rabbit hole with all sorts of ifs. And, um, but it really, the dog, just like us, in a lot of ways, when you want the, the reward, you want to get to the, the thing, the right thing, you want to do it, but you're on the wrong path. You wish that somebody will tell you you're on the wrong path. That's, that's exactly what it is. You couldn't put it in better, better words. That's, that's exactly what it is. You're shown right from wrong, and, and that's it. It's, uh, I mean, trying to do one thing all the time going and going and going it's, it's frustrating it's, it's frustrating for, right i i then for the dog and for the dog the dog is going to go crazy it's not going to oh yeah he gets it and another thing that it's like they say okay he gets it okay put the dog away he got it no he didn't he was just finally hit a mark you know it doesn't mean that next day when you bring him out, he can get it instead if you're doing it yes and no yes and no yes good boy yes good boy or no whatever you know you repeat that a few times I don't put my dog away into it and I say he gets it into like, no, he got it for real. So it's like, I'm going to repeat it a few times, but ba -ba, he got it. Okay, now we can give a break or the next day, or whatever. But, but uh, that's, uh, it's just how to guide the dogs. That's us. Right. How do you feel about uh, clickers? The clickers? Yeah. <laughs> it's funny. Uh, I, think, I think I've been using the sound way before clicker came out. And then somebody came up with a clicker. I think it's a great idea that there's a there's a new, neutral sound that can indicate that the dog did something. It's okay because a lot of times we cannot. Uh, maybe we can, but maybe a lot of new trainers cannot fake a good boy command or 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 a, or a no because a lot of people is like they're frustrated with the dog. They're telling the dog and they say. Oh, good boy, but they are not saying good boy. They're just saying it for saying it. And the dog knows better. The dog is intimidated and he knows that that person is not saying good boy. So the good thing that I think about the clicker is that it's a neutral sound. It's a neutral sound that when you're teaching something new, totally new, you can, as soon as the dog touches it or does it, because the clicker sound, it's just like saying good boy. I use, I use that sound. I use clapping. I use good boy, yes. There's 20 different times of, 20 different ways of rewarding uh, the, the behavior. It's a, it, the clicker is not necessary. I mean, I know that they have books and Bibles about how to use the clicker, and I think it's all bullshit. I mean, like, I get like, I'm, sometimes I'm training my dog and doing something, and, or I'm doing a video, and I click because, because it's like a saying good boy or something. Right. And then they say, how come you didn't give a reward right away? The reward must be given as soon as the clicker sounds, no more than three times. Like, holy shit, can I give me a break? It's, uh, they go a little bit too far when it comes to, uh, to uh, train, how can I tell you? They, they try to follow a technique like if it's the only way to do it. And that's not, that's not how it is. Dog training has not a using, lot of Not using your intuition and emotion in the moment 
to interact, which is any yeah. dog, any dog can read it, you know? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I can tell you something quicker for certain animals, chickens and stuff like that. It's a lot better because it's a, it's a sound. It's a sound. A lot of these animals, they don't react too much to good boy and all that kind of stuff. So for animals, it's good. I mean, it's, you cannot beat it. But when it comes to dogs, it's, it's way different because we interact with dogs way different. We reward dogs way different. So uh, there's 20 different ways, 20 different sounds that you can make. Like, like uh, if you really, if the dog does good, something good, it's how you, hey, good boy. If it's something better, hey, maybe it's a little higher, a little bit higher pitch or whatever, blah, blah, blah. Or how you track him or how you pet him. It's, uh, it's uh, sometimes the dog is just getting a behavior and he's just like, what? Then he gets better. I like good boy. Then he really gets it. Yeah, that's what I want. He got it. And it's up. Tell me this one. That's uh, something I always... Not always, but I, I come across sometimes. Like I, you know, just like us, not, not all dogs have the physique to do certain things. Right. So like, for example, not every single dog, even if it's the, the right breed, so to speak, will be able to walk on the front legs just because right. of, of physique and balance and, and just structure. Right? Right. Right. Yes. But but trainers would get stubborn and keep pushing it and pushing it and pushing it not, and, and just never realizing that it's not a training issue. It's a, it's really it's, physiology. Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean uh, really I mean like like I was saying, I had a Newfoundland that it was like a more no, athletic wise. Uh, so but uh, it has to do in how you raise him, the structure of the dog, how this dog, what the dog does. Uh, I mean, like a, like, a, like a bulldog, for example, I wouldn't try to teach a bulldog to do a back hit, right. Right. you know? And uh, I mean, monkey knows how to walk on his hind legs, but I'm not, I'm not, I'm not gonna push it to do, actually, I, haven't, I thought the behavior, it was cool, whatever, and I, I, I really haven't even done it in almost two years. It was just a, a cool thing to do and, and see what happens. Uh, but um, the uh, how to build the dog to be an athlete, the, what the dog can do. The, then I get monkey again. All of my dogs are taught to do backflips. Oh, a monkey! I'm not going to take that chance because he's a big boy. Right. He might be able. He might be able to do it, but in the process, he can get hurt. So I'm not going to take that chance. It's yeah. Just, he might do a half ass flip with the frisbee and stuff like that, but I'm not going to. From when, once I see how big he was going to be and all this, like, you know what? I'm going to step away from that one and, and it's not going to happen. Because there are so many it. other things we can be doing, right? Exactly, yeah. I mean, the, the backflip, it was such a big thing with our jumpy. Yes. Because, <laughs> because, because, he's, uh, because I was able to do it. Most of, most of the backflip dogs that you see, the owner is right in front of them and they make a flip. It could be against them or could they could lure the dog to a flip. So that didn't work for me for studio work because in studio work, you need to be away from the dog mm -hmm. and the dog needs to do it. So from day one, I started, well, as soon as I started getting it, I started backing out. So I was able to do it. He was able to do a backflip with me standing you know, 10 feet away from him or something like that. So that was really important because a lot of the, it, I made a bunch of money with that, with that behavior. Because a lot of times they call me and I say, oh, Omar, I need a dog to, to do a backflip. They know that Jumpy did it. Yeah. And I say, okay, Jumpy will do it. How much is it? Uh, well, just for the flip, it's about $4,000. Okay, and that's, that doesn't include me as a trainer, going here, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And they'll, why? It takes a second. And I say, it took me two years to teach. <laughs> so so it was just like a, and and they would they would never say no because where the heck where are they going to get a, a dog to do a backflip like that no so i did tons of tons of so the minimum i thought i ever charged was about 35 for that quick trick right there so it was fun it was fun that's very and, cool uh, yeah and like i said monkey will be nice but it's too big and i'm not going to take the chance it's just it's not going to happen yeah like some of the the Chinese videos, when you see man, I cringe. Like, I mean, they are very cool, and at the same time, you know that 
to make that one take, few didn't go that right, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's a tough one. Mm-hmm. How about yeah. this? I have, you know, like I, I mean, over the years I've played with tricks and I, it's, I highly recommend anybody that train dogs. It's a must you have to like, it. if you, even if you don't train dogs, but you have a dog, at least two, if not at least three pet tricks your dog should know. It, it just changes. It's a game changer in, in, in the way you interact and the way you start to look at your dog and the way the dog looks at you. But besides that, like I've taught a bunch of things to dogs. Like I've taught a dog to, you know, open the toilet and pee and close and flip the thing and <laughs> all this like cover itself, blankets, skateboard. I did with my Yorkie. I told him to sneeze. Yeah. Shit. I, it, it became, it, it got stuck. Like he was in a loop. Like yeah. every once in a while, I'm in the house doing whatever I'm doing. And I don't even look at him and he's right somewhere right here by me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He never went away. Yeah. Yeah, because he's, it was a behavior that, that he knows that you enjoyed it. You liked it. Yeah, and, and he starts to seek attention gonna with you, that. He's going to offer you that behavior over and over again. That's what happens. When you're teaching tricks, that's going to happen all the time. When you teach a behavior, then, then the, the dog is going to repeat it and give it to you and give it to you and give it to you. So that's that's why it's so good to start new behavior and another one and another one and another one. And and don't give him rewards when the dog is just giving you that behavior because then he's, they're just going to keep doing it. So, but, but then when you have so many, then that's a cool thing because you do something else and then you say, okay, sneeze. And then the dog sneeze and it's like, right. he's having a fun, he's having a blast. That's, that's what it is. I had a bulldog that I had to sneeze also. It was funny as hell. It was really cool. <laughs> but, but did you have somebody that kind of got stuck with one behavior that was just pushing you always like, hey. Mm, you know what? It's hard to tell. There's, there's a lot of behaviors that they, that they offer all the time. Yeah, like, I guess like, you're no, around it so much. True. Yeah, no, monkey, monkey, for example, he's he's a joke. He'll he'll just go in the bathroom and flush the toilet. He's like, oh, that's monkey over there flushing the toilet. You know, like they're like, it, like if I'm going to or like if I'm going to pee or something, if he comes behind me, I have to push him back because he's like he wants to open the gate, he wants to flush yes, the toilet. Yes. He's like, Stay back, let me pee in peace. You know, that was for a video. That was having a good time. You know, this is I'm taking a beat. Just leave me alone for this. This is for real. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, it's funny. And so you do, uh, like I know, tell, tell me a little bit about the, I mean, you, you teach, you have some Zoom, Zoom lessons you do and people can learn tricks with you and, and you know, tell me a yeah. little bit about the program that you, when did yeah, you start I, that? I, I, I do some Zoom lessons, not too many, but, but I do quite a few. Uh, they, they can go to my website and, and uh, pretty much we do it, it usually work here and it's, it works really well. It works really well because uh I guide the people how to how to put the basics, how to lure the dog, how to reward the dog, and so on. And I have a I have a few um, a few of my customers that are really good, really good. And I mean, they never trained a dog in their life before, and their little dogs are doing all kinds of really, really, really cool tricks. And it's really fun to see it. It's rewarding when you see people are putting the time into it. Uh, I get a lot of people that don't succeed because they can put the time. If I say, okay, you got to put the time, you got to do this, do this every day, don't stop, up, up, up. Uh, just, just, they don't do it, then it's just not going to happen. Right. It's, it's left me very committed to it. Yeah, like I, I, I give this analogy often, like trying to learn foreign language and, you know, once a week you go and you say, hello, my name is, <laughs> it's not going to happen. That, that's no. just not going to happen. What, what would be a complicated one to where, like, it took you a very long time to get to, to being done? Complicated shit. Uh, like something that you, you were <laughs> almost like hit the wall and you're like, maybe I should just give it up. But you went back to it again. And You know what? It, it really has been with different behaviors. Like, even walking on the ha- on the on the front legs, it's, it's a tricky one that you have to put a lot of time. But the thing about teaching tricks is that uh, 
that you 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 never want to put a a a, lim, a, a timeline in when you're going to finish it, okay? Because uh, it's a uh, Sometimes I can work in a behavior and then I don't touch it and then come back and go, 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 go. And uh, the problem with a lot, so a lot of people, they try to train tricks. Is that they want to do it right away. They right. want to talk to, okay, I'll have that done in a week. And it's like, no, no, just take your time. You know, that's, that's why I like to train a lot of behaviors because it's like, I'm training one here, I'm training one there. It's like, so I can take my time, and sometimes the dog gets way faster than what I was thinking, and sometimes it takes longer. But if it takes longer, I'm not going to hit myself in the wall uh, in my head because it's not getting there. No, we'll get there later. Don't no problem. Like sometimes when you're training obedience, basic obedience with a regular dog, you have a dog that doesn't want it down and doesn't want to sit right away or whatever. You know, uh, why beat up the dog in, in that command? You know, it's just like sometimes. It's going to take a little bit longer, but when it gets there, that dog is going to have the best sit or the best down ever because he got there when he was ready to do it. He was not beat into it, you know. Not that you need to correct him. Yeah, we need to correct him sometimes. But it doesn't mean, like some people like, oh, my dog doesn't want to sit, and they just keep going crazy. And then three days later, the dog has the best sit that any other dog because it took three or four days to get yeah. it. So. Yeah, that's a super good tip for, for trainers. So he, he, as a trainer, you tend to become so stubborn and get it done. And you're like, no, no, I, we will. We have and, time. We have time. We, we have so much time. And, and sometimes just keep poking at something. It creates more pressure, more like, I, I, you know, it freezes the dog instead of the dog trying. He, exactly. He's like, leave exactly. me alone. And exactly. and you really have to step away from it and and revisit in few so days. And do something else and do something else. It's like I Very do a lot tip. of uh, some of the tricks that I use that are like uh, helpful is like uh, for example speak right to make the dog speak or to make him spin around. That's a really good trick that dogs love to do. You say spin and spin and they go this way, go that way, and then they start spinning. It's a really easy behavior for the dog to do. And they love it because it's just a fun thing to do. Or speaking. I, I tell my dogs to speak from there a little because it's like when I tell them speak, it's like they're asking me to do it. It's like they, they talk, they're talking to me. So they're speaking, speaking. It brings up their drive and all that kind of stuff. So if I'm teaching a behavior and it's not getting to the dog right away or whatever, before the dog goes into pressure, I tell them to spin a few times. She's like, oh, this good. And then it's just like, Shh. It clears his mind right away, and yeah. then we come back to it, to 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 whatever we were doing. Yeah. So instead of pushing it, instead of putting that pressure into whatever I was, I was doing, I break it by making the dog turn around a few times, or just like if you're giving a ball or something. Yeah, yeah, I love it. it. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, what we would call a, a, a reset before the dog even realizes. Oh, I don't know if I can do this. You just throw him into doing something that he loves and that's super easy, and they just exactly. go yes. Exactly. And and yeah. and then you go back, but that you, back, you get it, and then boom, it's done. But this exactly. is an art to be able to shift and recognize it before even the dog hits that. Oh, I don't know if I can. Yes. We're doing something yeah. cool, and we revisit again. Yeah, that, that's, that's, that's a that's very cool. special quality yeah. as a trainer to have. It doesn't matter what kind of training you do, recognizing. Yeah. Recognize and reading the dog. I mean, you can read the dog, the dog's body language in 20 different, especially if it's your own dog. It's like one flick of the ear, you know exactly where the dog is at. It could be anything. So things like that, you can just get out of that hole right away before it becomes a hole. So, so get out of that situation and, 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 and make it fun. How do you feel about dogs um, like, uh, like a lot of trainers, at least some sp- sport trainers believe to, you know, the dog has its own, a lot of crate time, then it comes, it works, it gets a little attention, but then it goes back alone. Mm -hmm. And the interactions are very strictly performance oriented, and that's about it. How do you, where where do you stand on this? I I mean, that's not me. That's uh, that's, that's definitely not me. And uh, I know some people do it. And uh, that's that's their prerogative. That's what they want to do. That's uh, that's how they they're going to accomplish where they're going to get. 
and it can probably work for them in that aspect that the dog comes out, he's pumped out from the crate or whatever. But that's uh, maybe that's one of the reasons why I'm doing what I'm doing because it's, it's completely different. Right. I like uh, I like more with my dogs to interact with my dogs, go take him out, get him in, in my car, drive with me, and like I like I told you, sleep next to me. I mean, monkey sleeps next to me. He's the one who wakes me up in the morning. Is that I touch his head before he goes to sleep? So it's different. It's, it's totally different. Uh, in the old days, we used to do like we used to do a lot of crate training. I remember many times, just like okay, stay in the crate, we we'll come out and work. Uh, maybe with the, with what I do now, maybe I will probably change some of that stuff. Maybe I will not be so strict into 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 that uh, into that technique. Uh, but like I said, I don't know because I'm not doing it. Yeah, I but don't most, either. Uh, like I, but, I don't think I've ever had to. I've never even been an thought in my mind to to have that kind of social isolation. Um, mm-hmm. Any time I, I would work with any dog, mm-hmm. they want to do things with me. I mean, that's right. like somehow never an issue. Right. And uh, sometimes, I, I like, I don't know, and I, again, like, I don't want to that was just a question that's gonna maybe go too deep but sometimes trainers believe that they will get more of the dog because of that social separation um and i i think a lot of social interaction actually creates more more social interaction that the kind of the opposite i don't know In, for my experience, I mean, when I had Carlo, he was a really good shoots and dog. Uh, he was my buddy. I mean, we went everywhere together. I mean, it was just like, there was no, none of that stuff, not even close. I mean, he was like, my buddy, we'll go play frisbee here, there, we'll go play there, we demonstration. I used to do a lot of dog training and 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 that was it. And he was great in shoots and so yeah. he really never needed any any of that. Uh, like I said, maybe some people, they, they won that, to put the dog in the crate and bring him out as a, as a ball of fire and explode in the field and then go and put him back. That's the prerogative. Uh, I mean, I would never do it, but that's that's how they yeah. go into it. Some people do all kinds of competitions, not just with dogs, but with animals, that they put the animals to certain uh, certain ways to do it. So, But then uh, I, think, I, I think it's way better if we interact with our dogs and have more as a family and uh, that kind of stuff. Then again, yeah. that's just me. I think more interaction creates more, creates better interaction at the end. Less interaction, <laughs> you, you're definitely tapping on the need to interact, but to be better in interaction, you need the interaction. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely, 100%. So when you train, like right now, do you do you have something in mind? Do you like get a like a, a, a advertisement, something you're working on? They they tell you what they want, or you're preparing yourself <coughs> with a bunch of things, and you and and they get to choose from what you already have. How how is mostly the way you you work with them? Yes. Uh, well, in, in, in my case, it might be a little bit different than the, than the studio people that work. Okay? And the studio people that work, most of the times, they, they, wait, they wait to get, they put the basics and they wait for for something that comes. Oh, we need the dog to go and do this, or whatever, and then they work on it and they repeat it. And then, and then they work on it, they probably never see it again after a while. Right. So, in my opinion, it's different because I train my own dogs for my pleasure. So, a lot of a good 80% of the things that I teach my dogs are never going to be used in, in studio. It's just fun, fun stuff over and over again. I could be in the shower and I think of something. Something clicks in my head. It's, Shit, yeah, I'm going to do it tomorrow. I, can, I cannot wait until the next day to, to put it to test or start doing it. Or it could be on a dream. I could be, and it happens a lot of that I'm dreaming of something. It's like, huh, and then I wake up in the morning, it's like early, or, or I just like don't go to sleep because I'm thinking about like, yeah, and it will work this way, and it just get busy, and it just get busy, and it could be a behavior that lasts a few days, a few weeks, or depends on, on which dog I'm planning on doing it, and it's, it's that's just been part of my life. Once the dog learns a trick, a behavior, and you 
let's say you you, you kind of left it alone. You almost you, you had other things and you just kind of left it alone and then you revisit. Do mm-hmm. you find that the dogs are very quick to, I mean, like their memory, like long-term memory, that they, they're like, oh, yes, I, they I know what we're doing right away. Yeah, yeah, right away, right away. I mean, if, uh, if you have a dog that is, that is smart, that is, has a clear mind and you've been working with, and, and it's, uh, yeah, sometimes behaviors, you teach a behavior, and you don't touch it for months, sometimes years. Right. And, uh, and it just like spark, it just comes back right away. Sometimes you need a little work. Sometimes like oh, yeah, a few repetitions, like, oh, let me let me refresh the memory. And, yeah. But most of the times it comes back right away. And it just like, uh, it blows my mind. I had, a, I had a cat that I trained to come and jump on my shoulder and, and uh, when he was a kid. Cats are whole yeah, different. Jumping level. my shoulder, and he was cute and blah blah blah. And this cat became kind of feral because I got it as a rescue, and he was kind of crazy, weird, like to run and all that kind of stuff. Afraid of different things, and uh, I still have him somewhere around here. And like, when he leaves and comes comes back, and then whatever. Long story short, um, very little interaction with this cat because he became pretty feral. The uh, I think it was last month that I saw him. His name is uh, Richard. And I said, hey, Richard, come in. So I'm playing with it, so I'm petting him. And I backed up, and I tapped here, and he jumped like when he was a kid. And I was like, what the fuck? I said, it was for real? Crazy, did, it, right? did, it, did it really happen, or it was a fluke, or what? But but uh, no, it's just yeah. four years later, about four, almost five years later. Did he remember like when he was a kid? And and, and, and so it's it's amazing what, uh, what animals can do. It's just... Uh, they really remember stuff and that. Yeah, they they definitely do. And sometimes you, I mean, they, they will just play something out just because they thought of it too, just like us, out of, out of nowhere. It's like, watch me. <laughs> yeah. No, no, they, they love it. I think, they, in my opinion, it's just the more you teach them, the more they learn, the easier it becomes, the better relationship that you have with your dogs. And, and uh, it's just uh, How really about your generalization training? Because that's an important part. Like how, how soon do you, on average for whatever you would work, like, like how soon you would start to say, well, let's open the doors here and let me show that behavior can happen mm-hmm. in, in different situations. Right. <clears throat> well, I, I always like to put the foundation on whatever the behavior is. Okay, in other words, uh, if for example, let's say a dog needs to go and open a refrigerator by pulling it or with his mouth or something, <clears throat> and then uh, the dog doesn't have a good retrieve, then I will never try that. I will never try it because I like to have it very clear on the dog's head what a retrieve, what a hold, what a pull, all the thing is before I do it. So. It's, uh, I'm the human, I'm the one that has the, the imagination of how to make tricks the and steps, behaviors happen. Yes. So the foundation has to be there. I, I always like, I, that's why I put all the foundations that I can think of, and then when the trick comes, or whatever behavior I want to teach, is there. If I get thrown for a behavior that, that my dog doesn't have the foundation for it, uh, I, won't, I, won't play, I won't play with it, I won't be, no, I say no, because I'm not gonna put my dog but it's something that he doesn't know. I will work on the, on the, on the foundation and then take him to, to that behavior. What is a, something, one of your favorites? I'm sure that you, you've, you've done it so much that you probably can talk for hours of funny stories on a set. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, but give me like your top two or top three. Like, oh, I, yeah. I, I love this kind of stories. Oh, set, on set, on set, on set. Uh, oh shit! Got me off. Or you can time. come when you when whenever it comes to you, you know. Yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to think. This, there's been tons of them. I mean, when when dogs like uh, like uh, especially Jumpy. Jumpy was a character because he would just go and and try things on his own, no one like <laughs> with, uh, with the with the characters or whatever. He was just like go and try to do it or sometimes you, <clears throat> you tell the, the the actor to do something and they do completely something completely different and then uh, oh another thinking about jumping 
his one of his uh, best behaviors was to pee, like uh, on people or whatever, you know. But just a fake pee, to mm-hmm. his leg, and, mm-hmm. and, and, do it. and uh, but I had to be, I had to make sure that he had gone and pee outside before, because if I tell him pee on something, he will pee on something. So one time, this big director came. <clears throat> and we're jumping, jumping, showing him off because it's like everybody, everybody's like, come show, jump you off. Just like everyone is saying tricks. And uh, so, so somebody said, tell him to pee on him, right? And I'm thinking to myself, fuck, he hasn't peed outside. So I said, okay, I said, okay, jump, go pee. And he freaking peed all over the guy's leg. And uh, he just went like, let it all out. And, like, oh, and then I called him off and everybody's laughing. And the director never even realized that she was like this totally yeah. well. <laughs> And he like, but, oh my God. Yeah. But things like that happen all the time. And it's just, it's just funny stuff. Do you ever- time on okay, Jumpy had, we were on set and Jumpy had to go to the bathroom. <clears throat> but I didn't realize, I'm talking to people who were setting up this and that. And all of a sudden it's like, where's Jumpy? What? He never leaves my side, you know? And we started looking around, looking around. And he had gone all the way to the other side. Of, it was a huge stage. It was like you had to go like through a maze to go to, to the exit. And he went to the freaking exit. The guard opened the door. He went and peed, opened the door back, and he was coming back. And I'm like, where the heck did he go? He's like, no, he just went to pee. And then he told the guy to open the door for him, and he came back. So there's a little, cool little person. Yeah, little guy, little guy, it's just like, only song, like, you're not taking me, I'm out. And he went, so, and he was in a new stage that he would just got in there, so I don't know how he realized where the exit was, whatever, but he managed. What would be your advice for people, train, dog, dog people, not trainers even, just people that own dogs? <clears throat> with, why, why, why do pet tricks? Like, like, a, like I said, pet tricks is, People call them tricks, whatever. I, I call them behaviors, just to teach, say it down, or whatever. It's, it's just different behaviors. And uh, I think the more the, the the more tricks that you teach, the better bond that you're gonna have with the dog because you're gonna understand your dog a lot better. The dog is gonna understand you a lot better. And the cool thing about the tricks is that it's, there's not a lot of pressure on it. I mean, I, I believe in pressure on obedience and to teach the yes and no, like I was explaining. But then once the tricks come along, it's, it's, it's fun stuff. You don't, you really don't need uh, major corrections or, or none of that stuff, just just a simple no or yes or good boy, and it's all fun stuff. And it's just, if the dog is having fun, if the owner is having fun, that's, it doesn't get any better than that. Yeah, the, the one thing is spending time together. Yeah, this, that's, this, that's, that's a big thing. one. And then <laughs> seeing the, the fruits of your effort of the interaction. Yeah, yeah, and, and everybody that I know that I train and everybody that I know that train tricks and stuff, they're very committed to our dogs. It's, the dogs have the best life, that's just for sure. The, everybody that I know that is big into, into their behaviors, into their dogs, into their tricks, those dogs are loved like like nothing else. I mean, by them, by their families, by their friends, by everybody. You, you, somebody comes to your house, it's like, they want to see their tricks, you show a few of the tricks, they love it, and so the dog is loved by everybody. And, and, and so the still, dogs, you, you, do you find that the dogs actually enjoy to perform in a way, yeah, right? Absolutely, yeah, 100%. They, they, they 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 because they, they see dogs. everybody happy, and, and they, they are the attention at the mm-hmm. moment. The and they is, like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I used to perform on the street. I used to do a lot of tricks with my dogs. And they get a kick to it. You know, everybody applauses and stuff like that. Yeah. It's just, These are the best ones. I, I still really? have, it's a very old, very old video, but I still have a video of me in, in Ybor City in Tampa doing things with yeah. a couple of dogs. And, you know, you start by yourself, and next thing you know, 15 minutes later, there is a crowd. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, all it takes. That's all it takes. Right. Start whipping your dog, and then the crowd comes. That's 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 a uh, that's a really cool thing. Yeah, yeah. My dog, I take I take him a lot. I do a lot of home, like in Home Depot, we do demos and all that kind of stuff. And 
<clears throat> especially the little oricali that I have, a jumpy son, because I take him <clears throat> and I put the leash on his mouth. And everywhere I go, he has like the per prettiest, perfect heel uh, next to me with the leash on his mouth all the way through shopping or whatever. And he's like just happy as he can be. He's right next to me with the leash on his mouth. And, and then I do a few tricks or whatever. And, but but it's just like really fun stuff. I, I don't have to really hold the leash or nothing. It's just like, that's just like a show of thing for him to hold the leash on his mouth. Yeah. And he like it. It's, it's, it's he feel, so the dog feels important. It's like, I'm, I'm doing things. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, and 100%. they know. So you do also how I I don't know how much, but I just kind of look through through the stuff that you do, and you also uh, um, help people <clears throat> with problems and stuff too, right? Like uh, just normal obedience and behavior, or, or yes, yes. Uh, don't do much of it because of the studio, but uh, in the past few months, because of the uh, strikes that we have here, the studio work is pretty much oh, dead. Yeah, we have. Uh, we have uh, there's a few gigs here and there that are in that union, but uh, so everybody's fighting for them. So it's like it's been pretty much it's really messed up right now. But long story short, I've been like really getting busy with training, and uh, I've got quite a few one on ones that I meet with the people and we talk about training and I teach them how to train the dog or whatever. And sometimes I keep a couple of dogs here with me. And I, right now I have two actually that I'm training for somebody, actually neighbors, and uh, so that's. That's pretty much how it goes. Not like a full-time thing or anything like that right. anymore, but... Uh, anything, anything that's interesting to do, yeah. right? And it's fun. I really like training dogs. It's just like, this is what I, like I said, this is what I've been doing for so many years. And <clears throat> and I love to get green dogs. I love to get a, a, a green dog from somebody that doesn't know anything because it's, like, it's, it's fun to see it come to life, you know, sit down, stay calm, all that kind of stuff. And maybe throw a couple of tricks and it's just it's fun stuff, fun stuff. Do you ever think to do some sports again or or that's I think that's it for now. I mean yeah. I, I thought many times of doing it. Uh, I mean I love the sports. I was never as committed as you are and a lot of a uh, high end competitors as are. Crazy as I am, right? I know that's good. That's good. It being 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 competitive with something and, and, and being committed to something is great. Uh, I mean, my dogs did good, but uh, like I said, I was doing many other things around it. And uh, that's when I started studio work because uh, I was like, if I put the time that I put in shoots in three. Right, on exactly. A mud, on a mud that I picked up from the dog pound, this little brown mud. This little brown mud is going to pay my car, my mortgage, and we're going to have a great time. So I started balancing out. It's like, I love shoots on. But this, I love this better, and and it pays me a lot and more. Gives, Children, uh, I have yes. to pay. I have to pay for the trips. I have to pay for this to compete with ten people and try to get a trophy. So I was like, no, this one is paying me for this, for this, for that. We had a great time. We go here, we go there. We, if I go out of town for for a TV show, they pay me. <clears throat> so, so it, it wasn't hard to choose. So that's when I when I started doing this. Been over twenty years, and and. That's what I've been doing ever since. If I was, I always thought if I was rich or something like that, that I would have the time. I would love to go on the beach with someone put the time. Yeah. You know, yeah. But, but then again, it's like, uh, I do, I stick with my tricks and my studio work. Yeah. So I, watch, I still love to see you guys compete. It's beautiful. The way you see the dogs working nowadays is, is incredible. It's, I mean, it's top of the line, top of the line to see all these uh, handlers, how they work with their dogs. And it's just beautiful. It's very beautiful. I really like it. Yeah, it, it became me. more, more, way more technical, more, more knowledge in the training, yes. just like with everything. Yes. So it's kind yes. of. I mean, I, I mean, I can, I can see myself when I was training. Back in the day when I was training my dogs, I was with a frisbee here, a ball here, a squeaky toy here. I remember those, uh, those uh, newspapers that used to buy in, in any grocery store that it looks like a newspaper. There's a squeaky toy. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was my favorite toy. And uh, like I said, my tracking was done uh, all by uh, rewards, by reach and stuff like that. So I was big into that back then where I didn't know anybody that was. Because back then, nobody was that I know of right. like that. It was like, there was a lot of, there was a group, there was a lot of correction, there was a lot of e collars, there was a lot of prong collars. There was a lot of like a soldier type thing, go, 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 go. It was, it was different. 
Uh, my relationship with my mother-in-law was way different. Yeah. And it showed. They really showed how how happy and how energetic he was. And, and I see a lot of that now. I right. see a lot of that. At that It's time, not- people... I- At that time, people didn't really care. It's like, okay, yeah, you look, your dog kind of looks more animated and more joyful, but ultimately it doesn't matter. And yeah. I'm glad that, that it changed to where it actually does matter now because it yeah, should it matter. Yeah, yeah, it, it matters. And, and, and nowadays there's more techniques and, and more res- uh, uh, techniques. That's what I can say. They, they can learn from a lot of people like you and everybody else. And, So everybody's really doing a really awesome job. It's like, it's some beautiful, beautiful pieces yeah. I've seen out there that I really enjoy seeing it. It's awesome. So when you moved to, did you move to LA and then you got into that movie industry or you already had it in mind and that's why you went to LA? Well, I, I had that in mind, yes. That's okay. that I had, at the time I had the Malino and I had a little Jack Russell that uh, they were great into tricks and I was like, Let's go give it a shot. And I came. We were working. We were doing actually weird. At the time, I was doing more training than anything else. But then I met, uh, then I met uh, somebody that has an animal agency, whatever. Mm-hmm. Big company. Yeah. Uh, with exotics. Yeah, yeah. It's Jungle Exotics, actually, the name of it. And I met Joe, and he was really cool. And and I had the little Jack Russell that would do anything. And I think we got a, right away, we started working. We got some good gigs. Uh, we got some really nice commercials, and uh, we got a movie, uh, Orange County, way back, is the name of the movie back then. And that little Jack Russell did a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. He, was, he was awesome. He was really good. Was it easy to break in, or how, how was it? Uh, with me, it was not easy. I mean, it was not hard. Like I said, I mean, these people, uh, I'm usually really straight out with people. What I do, I don't, I don't go on kiss ass or, or, or vice versa, you know? It's just like pretty straightforward. This is what I do. Blah, blah, blah. I'm friendly. I make it, make friends, and we all get together fine. And and that's it. You know, it's like a, if you have if, if you have a good dog for studio work, it, and and if you're friendly, if you're not stuck up that thinking that you're the best or anything like that, that people are going to start thinking, oh, this guy's is, is an asshole. Then uh, I'm pretty sure that you can find contacts <clears throat> that will work with you. Because they need good dogs in, in the studio industry. You know, it, it, there's so many animal agencies that have a lot of dogs, but a lot of those dogs, like I was telling you, they only know certain things. This dog is good for that. This dog, this dog is good for something else or whatever. But uh, if you have a dog that is good, it's good looking or whatever, and, and if, you're, if you're friendly, if you can make friends with the people, then it should be okay. And I work with a lot of different animal agencies and we all get along, no problems. There's a couple that, that heads with but this is yeah like get along is an important thing i think in almost in any business and and so th- when you when you get to l- right now at, at the point where you are do you still go through the animal agency or you're established to where you don't need it anymore you, you always need it you, you always, always need, need it. it you always need it because They're animal companies, okay? They, they, there's, a, there's a whole gang of them here. So everybody has different animals. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people don't have the malinois that I have. There's a couple of them. But certain behaviors or whatever, you know? So they all, we all know each other. I can get a call. I have my own company. I get a call right now for a, for a press canary or a, or a king course or something. I don't have that. Right. So I'm going to go to somebody that has it, uh, most likely an animal agency. If the animal agencies don't have the king courses, I go to a private party, maybe. Private parties are, we use them very little because uh, it doesn't work as easy as people think. Right. It's like you get, you, you get people that bring you a dog and say, oh, my dog will do all kinds of things, and they show you. And they get very the, excited. <laughs> the, the dog is well trained, it sits, does it, blah, blah, blah. but then when it comes to walk, walk away from the owner, work with people or whatever, they completely shut down. So you really don't want to get to a job and look bad. That's pretty much what it is. Yeah. It happened to me a couple of times many, many years ago with with other with uh, people that had their own dolls that they were trained and they were just like a complete failure and they just go home like, why the fuck did I do this? She was just stay home. 
Yeah, so, I can only imagine how that would be to to wear. Um, man, I I remember like in, and this is early, I don't know, like mid eighties, back in Bulgaria. You know, um, that's where I'm from. And I had a I had a collie. I had a lassie dog because that was the time. Mm-hmm. And. It wasn't even that popular of a dog, and they wanted to make a movie, and somehow they got a hold of me, and I was excited. I'm like, okay, sure, here I am with my dog. Man, what a what a experience and a wake up call, and like you know, it, it, it's just not as easy as somebody would think that you just go yeah. and you, even if your dog knows how to do things, it, it just there is so many components to to performing just like an actor you know and then when you have everybody come to work ready to film to shoot and you and your dog are the one that complicates everything it's a bad feeling yeah yeah let's jump into something there is yeah but uh, yeah i mean it, it all comes with experience you know it it's a it's a big thing when it's, once you have when you've been working in the industry for years, how easy it becomes to do just about anything, it, it, and it's not just too much about the dog anymore. It's about how you're going to make it happen, how you're going to talk, how you're going to talk to a director and tell him no, this is possible, this is not possible, or right. maybe we can, right. or maybe you can do it this way, or maybe you can switch the camera. I mean, I've I've had I, I did a shot one time. I think it was with Jumpy actually that uh, the dog was supposed to come and do this incredible jump and catch something or I don't know what, something. I can't, I can't remember exactly mm-hmm. what it was. But anyway, so the dog comes and he does it like an incredible jump or something. Yeah, I don't remember. But anyways, he does sure. it perfectly. And the director goes like, wow, that's awesome, right? And then they, then they go and look in the screen. And... And then they say, "Fuck! Oh, you jumped the wrong way. He was supposed to come from the other end of the of the of the room." And so they're going crazy doing this, right? You better repeat it. And now you're gonna have to move this or that. And I and I and I told the director, I said, "Can you just flip the screen?" And and uh, and when you when you yeah, and we are like, oh, hey, we done it. We done it. Hey. It's like, and he was pissed because I was on the train and it's like, he's the big director and stuff like that. And he couldn't think on his mind that all they had to do was, they already had the shadow, yeah. they have to just flip it and the dog is going the other way. So, it's, But that's uh, the kind of input that you can give once you, you have so much experience to where, yeah, exactly, yeah. To where you can see a producer struggling of, of how to make it and, and you can chip in and it's like, dude, I can, yeah. I have an idea here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we, and we do it all the time because a, a lot of times they don't. A lot of times directors and, and producers and whatever, they don't know what dogs can do. They have an, a, an idea when they write the script and then the storyboards, but realistically, a lot of times they have no idea. So a lot of, a lot of, many times I, I can talk to them and say, look, what if we do it this way or that way or whatever? And they go, yeah, it's actually even better than what they had in mind. But, but you're able to tell them hey, this is possible, this is not, and so on, so. It's, it's a fun stuff, it's a, it's a cool stuff. So when you do the, the like uh, uh, your Zoom calls with, with people that wanna learn tricks, you said like you, I mean, in your rooms and everything, mm-hmm. what would be, what would be something that will be a, of concern when you see somebody training that, that you just, you're like something is not coming along right you know it, it happens it happens quite a bit uh, one of the things that i was telling is that uh, some people try to get the like a whole lesson like let's say we're working in an hour uh, 40 minutes or whatever and they try to get how to train 20 20 tricks uh, mm-hmm. or how to train a backflip or how to train this and that and the dogs are not gonna ever gonna do it. The dog is an athlete, it's not an athlete, or or they want the dogs to go and open this and open that. The dog doesn't have 
doesn't have any foundation when it comes to retrieving or holding and stuff like that. So, so yeah, it, it, you get quite a few of things like that that you have to like pump to them. Right now, I have one. I hope she's not watching this. I don't think she is. Uh, that uh, she wants to make all these YouTube videos, but her dog doesn't have a lot of, mm -hmm. you know, and, and because she's following this this YouTube people that are doing certain things with dogs, so she wants me to. I mean, dissect the videos that she's showing me and tell her how to do it with her dog. So it's like, I mean, I did a little bit here and there, but then I said, you know what? We got to go back to basics. I mean, realistic. Yeah. You have to train the dog. Your dog has to have really good obedience. You have to be able to work away from your dog. If you want to do these behaviors that this other dog's doing, it must be a really good, solid uh, retrieve, hold, all that kind of stuff. So, you know, it's like, get, let's get back to basics. And so I think she understood that we started to, but I don't think she was very happy with it. But it's like, no, it's, I can't do miracles and, and tell you what to do with a, a, all these videos if your dog is not ready. You know? Yeah, it, there is no, it cannot just happen like with a magic wand. No, yeah. Do you find sometimes some of them are just too hardcore, too intense and like overtraining to where you have to say, just take, take time? Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes, yeah. sometimes, yeah, it's like chill. Like I was saying, it's mainly the problem is that they want to finish the behavior right away. They want to like, they want to do it like, okay, in five days my dog's going to be doing that. In five days you're going to be doing that, and in a month my dog's going to be like monkey. It's like no, it's not going to happen. So you got to take your time. Got to teach the dog how to do it. Right. The, first of all, the dog has to enjoy it, and uh, and uh, and you have to be able to guide the dog to to do it, the the behaviors. You no. Know? And like I said, I had quite a few that are doing it the right way and they're just really good. just having so, the feeling of, of yeah because if the dog doesn't enjoy it it's just not going to happen no, even if it no. happens it's going to look so bad and you got to have the right foundation the right foundation is this this is very important focus is important i mean there's a lot of people that want to train the dogs to do a lot of things and the dog is all over the place if right. you don't have focus on your dog that you can talk to him and explain and, 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 and lure the dog into doing things, it's, it's, it's not going to happen. So we've got to go back to the basics. We've got to go back to the basics of feeding with the hand, get you focused, get look at me, all that kind of stuff, and then, and then we can start moving on to the other tricks. And once you start rolling, then then the, the ride becomes really good. If it's, if it's bumpy, then it's, it's, it's not going to be good. So. Right. You're kind of fortunate like me. We have place. To where you can get up at 2 a.m. if you wanted to and, and start fooling around with training. Yeah, exactly. What, what is, I, I'm sure there is something, a uh, best time for you, but what do you, do you find that dogs also have a preferred time of the 24 hours when they're more, just more in tune, more, more productive? <laughs> or, or, well, I mean, any, anything that has to do with cooler time is usually better, no matter what. If it's in the morning or at night time, it doesn't really matter. As long as it's nice and cool and the dog is fresh, okay? Uh, of course, when it's hot and humid and stuff like that, that's when it becomes a little harder to teach a dog to do just about anything. When I encounter that situation, I try to make the session very quick, very short and happy and, 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 and get it out of there. So the dog doesn't become, doesn't get a bad experience on, on because of the heat. So. Uh, when it comes about training, it's about dedication. When I'm training my dogs, like uh, like I said, right now it's like I'm not training anything new, so it's not that it's not that I have to be on the ball. But many times when I'm training new behaviors, or I get a new dog, or, or I'm training a new dog the first year or something like that, I'm feeding my hand and I'm training every day. I could I could go with my wife and then and for on a day night, and I get home at one o'clock in the morning. One o'clock in the morning, you're gonna see me put in the pouch and go, something. go and train. Go and train. I don't care if it's just feeding him by hand and make him do a couple of little tricks, turn around, cure little things or whatever. But I'm gonna keep the consistency because, uh, as we all know, we we live so many years. The dogs live so many years. So, so if I go two days without training, in my opinion, is like going two weeks right. of the life of the dog. You know, so. so and I there is a there is really a momentum that you want to, I want to keep it, rolling. Keep, yeah. keep it going because if you if you interrupt that 
you interrupted it. <laughs> and then there is a prize to it. Yeah, like my kid is like an amazing soccer player, nine years old, and I keep the momentum with her. Go, 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 go. And I try not to uh, not to let it slack because it's like once you start slack and then then you're losing time. And once you start getting older, then you realize how the time how how fast time flies. So you start appreciating it more about not wasting time. So what about diet? Like what do you in anything do you have any concerns with diet and uh, uh, like other physical endurance? exercises and treadmills and stuff like that or or yeah i i believe in 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 stamina endurance that's just that's my goal for all the dogs i don't if uh all my dogs all my dogs i do a lot of frisbee work with them a lot of bit frisbee a lot of ball playing with them uh, of, of course the frisbee i keep it low and fast yeah because there's some really nice straight sprints towards the frisbee and commit it teaches them to commit And uh, when it comes to diet, I've tried a lot of different diets, raw food, this, that, I have my own grinders. It's a pain in the ass when you have quite a few dogs to do it. So uh, so I just stick to try to get some type of good, good dry food, food you like that, that is good for your dog, that gives you good stools and everything is fine. And, and just pretty much how, that's how it goes. Do you, so, uh, so, so you like, in, at least in, in a lot of the beginning foundation stuff, you do a lot of the feeding during the training. But yes. when, when the dogs get more seasoned, how often do they eat once a day, twice a day? How, what is the schedule? Well, the, uh, the, I mean, when it's, uh, like I said, it all depends on when I'm training. Mm, like I said, right. even monkey, monkey's four years old, if I'm training something new that I need to do a few sessions a day, then he's going to eat in a few sessions a day because yeah. that's, that's if I need to use it, okay? If, uh, like I said, nowadays I don't have to use that much of uh, food with him, but like if it's a new dog, then uh, a couple times a day, two or three times a day. Okay. Uh, if it's a new behavior, sometimes sometimes you want to break the behavior in five minutes because you're picking the behavior, the dog, the dog you think that you ended up right there. So I'm going to end up the session and come back in a couple hours and, And, and follow through. So uh, it's uh, it varies a lot. It really doesn't it yeah. doesn't have it's, it's not said like a book. No like recipe. One, yeah. It's just like it varies and depends on, on what I'm doing. If it's a client dog, my I probably do three four times. Mm -hmm. you know, three three four times short sessions, really nice with the food and and it's done. And then again, I have to wean him out of the food. That's 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 my main concern. That's about the training. ultimate end goal, yeah, right? Well, that's, the, that's, that's the ultimate. I mean, it, in my opinion, to have a trained dog is a dog that is trained, a dog that doesn't need to have. Uh, I mean, when you train him, you can use whatever any any kind of technique or correction technique you want to use. But to say that I my mean, dog is trained is the dog. You don't need to have a collar, no collar, nothing. If the dog is trained, the dog responds to what you say. You can take him outside. You can do whatever you want, and and the dog listens to you like like uh, like like your partner. You know that's 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 when I call a train a dog that is trained that I don't have to be yelling at or nothing. Like if I need to open the door, let the dog in. Hey monkey, get on the sofa. Let the dogs in or whatever. Then okay, I release him or whatever. It's just like you can talk to a dog. That's when I call a fully trained dog that that you can enjoy to the, to the max. What is a um a breed that you feel that it's difficult to to work with would there be a breed there's, like that there's a few there's there's a few dogs that are not as easy as, as to train like like the regular uh working dogs that we work with how are um, the nordic I, dogs like the huskies and and those you know dogs I've, i haven't had that much of a problem with huskies a lot of people have but uh, i personally haven't had a lot of issues with them uh, Actually, nothing that I can remember that it was really bad. Right. Uh, uh, Chows, yeah, they can be a kind of a pain. They ask Chows, Akitas, the Chinese breeds, like Akitas, the Sharpies and right, stuff. Right, right, right. They, they, uh, they have some issues. Uh, some dogs, they carry big uh, genetics, like the Brazilian fila. I've had really good response with Brazilian filas, but, but they're aggressive as fuck. Well. Yeah, see? They, They just have that in them. They want to kill kids. And it's not a myth. I've seen it many, many times. So 
So uh, sometimes you you going against the, their genetics or what they are for. So so it can become a diffi- sometimes difficult to manage certain uh, behaviors. But uh, but uh, in general, the the, the the kind of those that I've seen that are kind of like stubborn have been like the Chows, the, yeah. the Chinese, the, yeah. the, the, the Chinese Sharpays, the Akitas. Uh, I mean, they're trainable, but it, I've, I've noticed that they're just stubborn. There is, there is a limit to it with them, yeah. Then again, they have not been mine. They have been clients, though. So we're talking about... Exactly. A couple of What of happens if you have an eight-week-old? Eight exactly. What if I have an eight-week-old puppy and I raise him to be what? So that's... I couldn't exactly. I, couldn't say it I, I haven't had those. Exactly. It's always the nurture versus nature debate. That mm-hmm. it, it all it's a combo. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a combination. Where, where, like, um, when you were talking about your your boy and soccer, and then you have the German name. Where, where what is your origin? Where do you? What, what? My father, my father was German. My mom was Colombian. I am Colombian. Where, where in Colombia? Uh, Barranquilla, the coast. Okay. I, I, I was going there quite a bit. I, I have quite a few friends. But it's been now, man. It's been <laughs> at least 15 years. I have. Oh yeah. Yeah. I haven't. I haven't been there in a long time too. Yeah. Yeah. I, I really liked it. I, I think I went three times and I don't know if it was just the people I was with mm-hmm. um, man I can't even think of the city it's one of the kind of cool cities to go to well, probably Medellin or Cali 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 yeah we were supposed to go we're supposed to go in the beginning of this year because we're going to shoot a, a, a movie with it mm. but uh, it got pushed so now I'm waiting to see whatever happened to that So it's been pushed actually for months and months and months. And then, uh, so... Uh, But it's pretty okay right now in Colombia. It's not... It's really good. Right? It's, really good. it's not bad at all right now. Not bad at all. A lot of people are moving there. Yeah. A lot of people are moving there. It's Some people, they say it's, it's, a, it's like a heaven over there. They say it's beautiful. Right? Yeah. Some places are like Medellin. It's like the weather is always nice. And, yeah. And uh, a lot of Americans, a lot of people from all over the world are moving there. It's not like it was before with all exactly. the drugs and, and, the, and the mafia and all this stuff. And so I'm sure there still is, but it's, 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 everything is, is very modernized. Not right now, it's really pretty. And yeah. I remember not- my first, very first time I was doing a <laughs> seminar. It, it, was, it was kind of crazy time still, I think, yeah. because we were in a... I mean, we were in some military base and we were on a soccer field and, and we had we had the the army guys in each corner of the soccer field, like, yeah. I mean, full armor. Yeah. I'm like, man, this is so cool. But at the same time, it's like, well, it's cool. But if we need that, that means maybe we're not that safe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that was also the time when... I, I went for a sports seminar and all of a sudden the army guys approached me and they're like, can you help us with detection? <laughs> and I didn't know much of detection. Like, you know, I'm like, man, I, I, I want to help you, but I don't know, you know. S- somehow they convinced me. I ended up watching them do things. I'm mm-hmm. like, let me, let me see what you do. Maybe I can pick up things and, and go you. from there, you know. And and that's all it took is from that point on it was a dog training scenario. Yeah. It was just behavior. Yeah, you see what they're doing, what, how they're acting, and then exactly yeah. simple. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm quite, supposed to I'm supposed to do a seminar over there to the to the, the couple police departments over there because we're going to do a movie and then so then they call me to do a seminar and I was going to go while we were doing the movie, but uh, so. Now I'm waiting to this finish and then we'll go over there. And they were they really wanted me to take me over there because it's like I speak Spanish, so they were exactly. like, Yeah, come on down. So so then they they were really so oh, maybe, that's maybe gonna be awesome. Different. That's gonna be yeah. like all around a, a great experience. Yeah, so sometimes we might do it sometime this year if that movie goes. And it's gonna be a cool movie, it's gonna be Malinos. It's gonna be, ah, yeah. be Man, Malinos are becoming such a like I, I I like it and I don't. Like I'm very conflicted about it. It's just such a popular 
dog right now. Yeah. I mean, every single dog trainer has a Malinois because it's almost like if you're a really good dog trainer and you don't have a Malinois, there is a question mark. I, I remember back at the time I, I, I would bring my dog and she was one of those that had a big white chest and white feet and, uh-huh. you know, and they're like, what is this? <laughs> and then I say the name of the breed and it became such a pain in the ass to explain what kind of dog I have and why do I have that dog and not the German Shepherd to where we are at the point that even any action movie, they will search you for, for it. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. it is. It has become the the dog of the day, and um, it's gonna pay the price eventually. I'm sure mm-hmm. it has. Yeah, to. The, yeah. The problem is there's way too many people breeding in backyards right now, and they're like, uh, so because I was actually looking for a friend of mine was looking for a puppy around here, but he wanted something not to pay too much money, so we started looking, and there were so many backyard breedings, and they were ugly, and they were like in bad conditions, and I was like, holy oh, shit, is this? It's not good. And a poorly bred Malinois is a trouble. I mean, yeah. it's a trouble. Mm-hmm. I, like Miami, the whole, like, Dade City there, I mean, the, the shelters are full with Malinois right now. Yeah, there, there is more Malinois than, sh- than any bully breeds and any bully mixes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're here too. They're here to get to find them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> very, very confusing times as far as... Yeah, they're, 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 I saw an ad a couple of days ago, they're breeding with pit bulls. Like oh. the ultimate Malinois, Malinois pit bull mix. Like, really? You really Oof. need to put pit bull in a Malinois? I'm going to have one... Uh, I'm, I'm going to have one of those little... I, I, I had that Yorkie for uh, 13 years, and ever since I haven't had a small dog. I'm thinking to get... Um, we had some one of those doodle and charles spaniel some like some some designer little right. dog little dog right they send it for problems he had big i mean he, he would like puke the food and then guard it for you mm-hmm, yes. i mean just really kind of had both sides super cute super affectionate and then very aggressive uh-huh. and he came for training and he wasn't, I mean, he just needed some normal structure in life. It's like, dude, like, don't do that. Like, why, why are you doing this? Yeah. <laughs> and, and, but I'm, I'm thinking to get a little dog again and, and have fun and do things. But I know yeah. I'm not going to teach any dog to sneeze again. That was, <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know if that was just, my little Yorkie that just got so obsessed with it. But I'm telling you, for years I felt so bad. And, and you don't reinforce it. I'm like, okay, I'm just going to pretend it's not happening. Okay. It didn't matter to him. Like, every once in a while, he would be sitting, waiting, waiting, and we will meet the eyes, or he will just decide, and he will go, Papa. <laughs> I'm like, dude, like, why are you doing this? For forever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what they say sometimes. So don't, don't encourage a behavior if you don't want it, you know? Right. Yeah, that was a, I, that, what a lesson for me. What a lesson. Yeah. Now I have this one, um, again, it came from Miami. Um, kind of Dutchy, Mali, little black dog. Mm-hmm. They were going to euthanize her because, like, some major OCD behaviors, like, just chasing cars, licking floors, <coughs> shadows, like like a combo of everything you can think horrible. And I have her now for quite some time. I, I and, and we stopped, like she's done with this. Like all of her obsessions are gone and now we are going into teaching her, you know, cool behaviors and tricks and I haven't tried to teach her to play dead mm-hmm. because she is, and, and I think I'm going to do it because if either it's going to work, I mean, it's going to work one way or another, but she is so intense 
-hmm. like so crazy, like any, none of my Malinois come to the level of intensity she has. Really? Like she, she can play ball and she plays ball. Like, you know, I mean, it's, it's a off the roof crazy, but clear, like very clear. And uh -huh. I'm like, I'm going to teach her to play that. And then I'm like, man, I don't think I can teach her to play that because she, she will <laughs> play that and she'll be stiff. Like, <laughs> like I wouldn't be able to do this to her, right? What, what do I do? Give me a tip here. Or, or I just go with it and see where she goes with it or what? Yeah, that's easy. Play that is just like a down position. No big deal. Actually, I, li I like to teach play that like, like with intensity. Actually, if a doctor has that like, type of intensity, it's good because like you can teach him to really play that. You know, so sometimes the, you say play. The, so the end result, you know, when, when like, like I had, I did it with a few other dogs to where I, after they play that, I kind of make him relax to where you, you know, they're yeah. really... I don't think she can do go that far. Oh, but you know, but you don't need to. You just the play dead is the 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 play just dead. The drop. Like, yeah, like Lucy, the, the the doodle that I have that I say play like when I shoot her, she jumps back and she she actually bars. She goes whoa, bang, and she just slams against like totally dead, you know, like. And then that's that's the fun part. You don't you don't need to take any farther than that. But if you want to, you can. But it's. But yeah. uh, it looks like it has a, it's a nice little duchy there. It's, it's nice crazy. Energy. Yeah, I was, and now she's, you know, I don't even think about rehoming her or anything. She, she just loves me and she loves everybody here. And Oh, it's your dog. You kept it, yeah. Yeah, I mean, oh, I, cool. I, it was just a <laughs> challenge for me. I took her, she was going to be euthanized. And uh -huh. I'm like, let me, let me give it a try. There's a challenge, yeah. I, I love challenges. That's, 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 that's one of my things. Yeah. All it's been is just the challenge of can it be done? And it was yeah. interesting one because you, you know, <laughs> like originally I, I even I wanted to to work with her with a veterinary animal behaviorist and put her on meds if they wanted to whatever, mm -hmm. and that didn't. It, it just wasn't working for me, mm -hmm. and. Um, yeah, I mean, we changed her just because, like, all of her OCD ended up channeling into play. And just something else. Yeah. Right, exactly. So it's not like I cured the OCD, I just moved it to something this, acceptable. Right? That's all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no challenges. I, I changed, I, one of the biggest challenges, probably the biggest I ever had in dog training was that I know this lady that she likes to rescue dogs and so on. And uh, so <clears throat> up here in the, in the hills of Pasadena Hills, there were there was a pack of uh, wild dogs. Mm. Okay. But they were wild. I'm talking, they were born in the, in the, in the, in the woods and they, they come and eat from the trash from the, from the, from the shopping centers and they go back to the woods. <clears throat> totally wild. And they, uh, the uh, town was going to get him and they were going to kill him. They were going to euthanize him. So this lady got mobilized to try to get him <clears throat> and she was only able to catch one female. She was like a Dobie mix, kind of like a Dobie color, but she was definitely mutt. <clears throat> and uh, they were able to uh, tranquilize her, put her in a crate, took clearly out, and she brings it to me for training. And I'm like, okay, this is a challenge. This, yes. this is a real challenge. I mean, this is a fucking like a wolf, like a crazy dog out there. Yeah, I, I <clears> mean. <throat> yeah, yeah, it turns out that she wasn't aggressive at all. It was more of a terrifying dog. You know, so I got her, I had her in a crate. She will poop and shit in the crate and everything else. I couldn't get her out of there because she was so shaken. <clears throat> then I was able to put the crate on a kennel and get her out of the crate. So the dog is in the kennel. And I would just go and, and sit with her and just talk to her and just chill, ignore her. Little by little, she started becoming that I could feed her by hand and so on. Long story short, a couple months out the line, I was able to start obedience with her, taking her on the leash and take her out to, but it had to be at nighttime, late at nighttime, because this dog couldn't see, hear cars, sounds, nothing. It was just like, had to be late at night. 
<clears throat> I was able to take her on a leash and walk her just like a normal dog, sensitive normal dog, with food and rewards and all this, blah, blah, blah. Take it out on the sidewalk. And uh, the funny part about this dog is like, if she will hear a car or a truck, she will go completely flat on the ground, like like camouflage, like, like just like go like this, like camouflage completely, wow. and wait until it will go by, and then slowly we'll get up and go. Uh, really crazy wild dog. Long story but short. But like, like terrified, not stalking, but. Yeah, just like a wild animal yeah. that is totally. Yeah, yeah. Long story short, it came out good. Couple months later, Obedience starts slowly taking him out, to get introduced to cars, to people, blah, blah, blah. She actually came out nice. It was nice obedience. It was happy dog. The tail was wagging. It's, it's a really nice, happy story, blah, blah, blah. And now my friend is like, okay, I have somebody that, that is going to adopt her, right? And I'm like, okay, does he know about dogs or anything? And he's like, I don't know. He's, he lives in Florida. So the guy flew from Florida to 30 some year old guy. He's never had a dog in his life. And I'm like, oh shit. So I'm working with the guy, explaining how everything goes and blah, blah, blah. Just, and pretty much just praying that everything goes well, you know, because he's flying this dog to Miami. You know? Yeah, so she like, can, she I'm can thinking, revert. I'm thinking, I'm thinking all this and it's the trauma and all that. And uh, so he flew to Miami and I heard that the dog was doing good, that everything was good. And then the guy moves from Miami to New York. Wow. And there's like tons of people and cars and everything. And long long story short, a beautiful ending. Perfect, perfect. The dog turned out to be a nice dog in Miami, in New York, with a new owner. And uh, so it was awesome. It was what just a like story, yeah. But, but it was a really, really cool story. And, uh, and it was fun. It was really fun. Yes. It, it was very interesting trying to teach her to, to work with it. It was really, really cool. Yeah, these are. I think as a dog trainers, we need we need this kind of uh, it, it it breaks our patterns also, and it changes and it makes us dig a little deeper into what we know and what we can. And it, it's uh, I, I find it very rewarding to to do. Yeah, like, I mean, one thing, yeah, like I mean, I've been doing this for like I said over forty years, and I learn every time. Every time I'm, learn, I'm teaching a new dog, new things, or whatever, I'm learning. I don't know at all. If somebody says they know it all, I don't know. They might, but I don't. I don't know at all. No. I learn and I keep learning and I got to keep an open mind because I can see a little kid doing something with a dog that, huh, that, that clicks. You have to keep an open mind. And then it's just, that's the fun part of it. It's just that you're never, I mean, if you know it all, then why keep it up? You know, the, the idea is to learn and, and enjoy the ride. So that's. I'm gonna send you a video of my dog playing that, see where I go with that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's easy. It's do you really travel? Do, I mean, no, no. I I mean, yeah, like, I. it's, it's not it's like easy. the first time. They I love, just. They, they love doing this shit. They love flapping. It's like, it's, it's, that's one of the easiest. Like Listen. with her, it like, would be interesting. If he likes to play ball, it's awesome because it's gonna really oh, drop. Yeah, <clears throat> it's gonna drop. Do you come back to Florida sometimes, or? Uh, and I haven't been in Florida in a long time. We've been meaning to go to Florida because we have a, a my wife's nephew's kid. They want us to be there. Got got parents, so mm. we need to go there and baptize this kid one of these days. But we haven't been able to go lately. Uh, how is it to go places with all the dogs? How does that work out? Do you have people? Yeah. Yeah, I have, uh, I have a couple of people. They're big sitters. They come and stay in my house and they take, they take take care of the dogs, let them in and out and stuff, and stuff like that. Yeah. What is the next thing you have coming up? What or do you mean? The, like any any project you're working on? or? or? Like I said, this, this movie is probably the, 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 the best Columbia. one that for now. Yeah. Nice. It's, uh, it's a <clears throat> it's a true story. It was about a, a drug dog in Colombia. That uh, is a, you can read about it. Her name was Sombra, Shadow, and uh, the dog was a super sniffer. This dog was nailing all these shipments of, of coke. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's like there was nothing that was going by by this dog, and, and they put a price on the dog. 
and, and the handler and the dog and everything else because it's like so <clears throat> that's what the whole movie is about nice it's about they, they made a story about the whole thing about the dog and this was, so it's gonna be really cool yeah it's gonna be it's gonna be fun so uh, it's an american or, or colombia movie it's American. Or some collaboration. Chai Colombia, yeah. yeah. It's a, the production company is uh, it's, it's, it's really well known. They've done a lot of movies all over the place. Cool. So and and actually they just they finished two movies in Colombia, and they did uh, the some of the producers are the ones that produced that movie that just came out. It's been now uh, Sound of Freedom. Yeah. Yeah. The the three of the producers are the producers of this movie. Oh wow. Yeah, that was. I think cool that's movie. one of the reasons why actually movies slow down right now because they, it, it went really big, so they're traveling all over the world and openings and stuff like that. So I think that's why this movie is a little bit stolen right now. That makes sense. Because <clears throat> Sounds of Freedom that turned out to be like a special movie for sure. Man, anything, any advice for new trainers? For new trainers, <clears throat> never stop learning. Never stop le learning and. Uh, and like we say, like like everybody has always said forever, is like you have to have the patience, the patience, the commitment, and stuff like that. And it's true. I mean, it's like we hear all the time for many years, like, oh, you're a doctor and you must have a lot of patience. And, and that's the truth. That's a, that's a true fact. We need to have the patience to to get the job done. And and uh, if you're consistent and not put a timeline into when I need to finish this, then it's, it will be a success because. The dog is going to get there. You know, it could take three days or three weeks or three months, but when the dog gets there, it's going to be a success because because that's where you were going to take him with the, the best way you could. You know, it's not going to be a rush, a rush product a project that the dog is going to get there intimidated or because you pushed it. Right. And if it's not going to get there, move to another, another, another. You know, sometimes it's better just to drop one because you're not getting there or whatever and work on something else. And then you, when you come back to this, then the dog already has a foundation and then you can go to the finish line with it. So. Yeah, that's a very, very good tip. Because, uh, <clears throat> yeah, just as we talked and about- and, and of course, always respect for the animals, you know, that's, that's, that's a must. But I guess that goes all together anyways. And, yeah, uh, the respect, respect for animals, it's a, such a huge thing and it's mainly becomes very confusing nowadays of, of uh, you know, the whole battle between the, all positive and the balance yeah. and then like uh, it's almost un well, I mean everybody's going to do what they're going to do you know we, we're going to work at, in my opinion the positive and the negative has to be as close as possible because we need like we were explaining we we need to cre uh, create a clear understanding for the dog to get where, you, where we're teaching uh, all positive maybe in the, re in the real in the perfect world with the perfect dog maybe might be possible it might take it six years or a year or whatever might be possible but but realistically it's not going to be it's not something that you're going to be able to tackle if you have dogs with major issues like dog aggression people aggression and so on so so i think the the to put a, a realistic uh negative reinforcement on the dog when when then i think it's very very important you know but right like i said I, I've, I've had people that tell me that they only want their dog to be trained positive as a positive. Oh, that's very common, yeah. Yeah, so they, okay, but the, you know what? I'm not gonna say no, I'm, I'm, gonna I'm gonna take money. If somebody else can do a positive, totally positive enforcement training on the dog, is gonna do it, I can do it too. But I'm gonna be realistic and I'm gonna tell them this, this is gonna be a limitations. Yeah. I can do it, I can lure the dog and uh, you can lure any dog to be happy and with food or whatever, but but I thought this, that's how you're gonna keep doing it. And that's how, that's the only way that your dog is going to respond. If, of course, if somebody comes to me and says that it has an aggressive dog and they want me to train it only positive, I'm going to tell them, oh, you are your mind, it's not going to happen. Go, go find somebody else. But if it's just the basic stuff that they want to do positive, that's fine. I'll take your money, I'll train your dog, and I'll tell you what the expectations of this training is going to be at the end of the month. You know, so. Yeah, and sometimes what happens is actually very interesting because then, then the... I think a lot of people are just so, um, in a good way, making sure that their dog is taken care of and it's not abused and it's not suppressed, like it's not mm -hmm. afraid of its shadow, which is horrible dog training to, to even talk about. But after they get that 
assurance that you're going to take care of the dog and that you're going to do the right for the dog. Then I find pretty soon they're like, well, what else can we do? Can we, can we speed it up? Or can we make it better? Or can we... And, and you f- I find that the, the owners themselves, once they feel comfortable, they're like, okay, let's, let's <laughs> advance. Now they, yeah, now they know, before right. they didn't know, before right. they heard from you know, so they, they were brain da- brain uh, washed by by hearing stuff. So they, that's what they thought it was. And uh, but then when they understand, understand like, no, that's not how it really goes. Then then they're more open minded and they can do a bit. They can get a better result with their dogs. So. Omar, where do they find you? Anybody uh, that wants to? I'm in LA. <laughs> the Omar uh, training with training with Omar dot com is my website. Training with Omar dot com. Uh, We're gonna put the, it on the comments also. Yeah, and then uh, the uh, my, my my Facebook and and uh, and Instagram Omar Van Mueller, both of them actually. And uh, the new Facebook page is uh, Monkey Omar Monkey. Ah uh, yeah, Omar Monkey. That's the one that I did. Let me tell you a quick story about this shit. Stupid fucks. Um, the uh, I never monetized Facebook or Instagram. I was like, okay, whatever. You know, I know a lot of people are making money and so on. So maybe you can help me with this. <clears throat> so I went to uh, Facebook, and they say to monetize Facebook, you need to have a business page and this and that, ten thousand subscribers, so many hours and so on, right? So I said, let me give it a shot. So I started uh, in the beginning of the year in December. Mm-hmm. So I said, start pumping videos, uh, reels, yeah. because they do ads, ads on reels. So start putting ads on reels, right? Boom, boom. I hit the tip. I, I was like, fuck, because I thought that I could, I could use the, uh, the followers from the other page, but you can't. It has to be a new one. So I was like, ah, oh, I mean, start all over again. So anyways, long story short, I start hitting it hard with some videos like every other day. Boom, 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 boom. Right away, went from 10,000 to 20,000 to 50,000 to to 100,000 followers and so on. <clears throat> Started making anywhere from 500 bucks to 7,500 bucks a month. Like that, right? Yeah. yeah so, yeah. and then I can be monetized. Zero. Bang. Killed it. And I'm like, what the fuck happened here? I was flagged by assholes oh, that figure right. that, that figure that training a dog is, is not natural and this and that and blah, blah, blah. So, long story short, right now, with the amount of followers that I have, that I got demonetized about three, four months ago, with the amount of followers and views that I have, I had like 100 million views in, in the past couple of months. I could be making anywhere from thirty to $40,000 a month with the reels. Yeah. And, and totally got demonetized. I went through all the support and talked to people, wrote all kinds of things. I cannot sue Facebook. Uh, there's all kinds of things that I went through to try to figure this shit out, and it couldn't happen. That uh, is dead. And oh. the thing is that the thing is that the uh, when they when you're flagged, the you get the bad comments from people. Oh no, this guy's uh, the dog's riding a skateboard. So that's totally Ill- unnatural. They, he probably was beaten in the head by by somebody in the head or whatever. Right? So anyway, so people will, will put bad comments like that, right? But Facebook reads it. The computer reads it. There is not humans. Correct. So there is not a human that can review the video and say, you're full of shit. So I talked to a lot of support and they told me, they said, that really sucks what they're doing to you. The support told me that. But the support only manages advertising. The ads and advertising and stuff like that. There's nothing that can take you straight to talk to somebody about the monetization and how unfairly we get demonetized. Yeah. So that's the end of it. So if somebody out there knows, let me know. Yeah. I even talk to lawyers. I talk to lawyers and it's it's impossible to sue them. Like you when you when you look at a dog doing things, you know if the dog likes doing that or it doesn't. Mm-hmm. But that's the that's a narrative and and it's a, they they are very quick to Attack. Oh, yeah. No, like no, they attack very quick. I've, I've, I've gotten attacks like this for many years, and I never answered to them because I didn't give a fuck. I mean, it's like people tell me, like, 
the dog has been forced uh, to to sit pretty for 10 seconds like it's not natural it's going to break the dog's uh spinal cord or i mean name it and right. they said it and i've read it but i never answered to them because it's like why am i going to start a fight with somebody that's so freaking ignorant you know but when it came to the to monetization it bugged me up big time because it's like they cut me out so it's like okay I'm going to keep doing the freaking videos and I don't make money. I don't care. But I'll do the videos. Fuck it. It's a very you know? different way how it's, but they, but there is no knowledge and education and, and they, a lot of those people, they think they're doing the right thing. Oh yeah. They think yeah. they're saving dogs lives like that. Yeah. Um, it's, 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 it's like PETA. It's, it's, it's the same crap. Yeah. PETA kills more dogs than anybody else in the world. And, and they act like they're saving dogs. They're not saving dogs. They're making tons of money. Through their I tell you stories like I, you know, again, that takes me way back in my childhood living in Bulgaria. And the gypsies, they used to have the bears, the dancing <laughs> bears, you know. I mean, they would have the ring on the nose and they would put like a hot uh, um, metal plate and they will be playing some instrument and it looks like the bear is dancing. Exactly, yeah. Now, that you cannot compare to a dog wanting to, to have fun. Like, you just cannot compare it. But that's what it's turning into. That's just the world out there. That's how it is. I mean, there's a lot of abuse in dog training. There's a lot of... Oh, yeah. In the, <clears throat> the tricks. In tricks. I've seen, I've seen a lot of Chinese dogs doing some crazy stuff that, but they but they don't care if they have to put tags on the dogs' paws for the dogs to walk in, to be on their hind legs and stuff like that. They'll do it. They don't they don't care. But that doesn't mean that everybody's that way, you know. So yeah, and and really, like ultimately, you can see just as you say, like they they, they actually the dogs feel like they they are part of the family and have a purpose and they're like doing things with you and it i mean it's as cool as it can be mm -hmm. and looking at from a totally different lens trying to find so much negativity about it mm -hmm. it's a uh, this is the problem where we are today and hopefully we change something because um, <coughs> we're not going to have dogs if we don't. Like, you, you're just going to end up being to where... Oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's bad out there. It's, it's, pretty, it's pretty bad. I mean, it's just like the uh, the animal rights, like against dogs, like to do anything, even for studio work, they're big into it. Right. It's like the studio work, if they... If anything that they see... Now people are recording and they're fixing stuff. They're editing stuff to make it look bad and so on. So it's like it's 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 pretty ugly, but we then again it's a huge world and we gotta live with it and we gotta do our part, try to fix some, and, and that's about it. Like if somebody spends half a day watching you train, it will change their mind. It will absolutely change their mind. <laughs> Yeah, but they just but that's that. not what people do today. Yeah. We are yeah, scrolling, I, yeah. flipping, yeah. and getting yeah, angry. Like, like I say, when, when I get these comments, it's like, I could answer back to the comment and say, no, it's not that way. We do it this way. But can you imagine? It's like they'll fight back, and then somebody else will fight back, and it's just like, it goes crazy. So it's like, uh, it's just let them think what they can, what can we do? There's a lot of people that just grew up that way. That's what they think. Yeah. You can't change it. That's a bad way to leave the podcast to it. <laughs> give, me, <laughs> give me some cool story. It's cool stories. Uh, let me see. Cool stories. Cool stories. Do you do any, like, a, um, like what is a, a, a trick that almost every dog really enjoys it? And it's not hard to be trained. For people just to there's there's there are many 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 right but like I was telling you it's something that I like teaching teach my dogs is spinning going left and going right because they, they it's like a dancing game that they just love doing 
And uh, so it's just like you tell them go go spin to the left, spin to the right, or just turn around in circles. And this is they love it. All my dogs love it. They yeah. jump and bounce, bouncing up and down. Those are those are behaviors that are motivate motivation beha- behaviors like jumping up and down, speaking, turning up. And, uh, the retrieving. I love the retrieving because I teach my dogs to catch anything or anything. I don't care what what size or how small or how big or or if it's metal or if it's wood or whatever. This this always had they're always having fun with it because it's it's yeah. it's just how it is and th- and then you can use it on so many things. It's not even funny. Man, I'm so glad we finally got to talk about this stuff. I know, we haven't talked in a long time. I can't remember last time I saw you. Yeah. It's probably with in California like 20 years ago. Probably. Who knows? I know you know what like uh I don't know, was a couple of years ago. You I don't even know how it came. You showed me, um, I don't know, was it monkey? Who, there was a, a bottle. And there was a what? A bottle, like a, a bottle, and, and he was putting the oh. stick. I can't remember what it was, but almost it almost looked like it was a, like a cognitive, like the dog actually intelligently was doing something human-like, you know? And it was a totally chain behavior you 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 broke it down for me on a, on the messages afterwards <laughs> oh yeah i can remember yeah that was a few years ago but that was uh that was kind of the last time and ever since i i got busy and the one that i it probably was probably when jumpy was drinking from the bottom maybe i have to send i have to i don't even know if i can find it it looks so it looks so cool there's a lot. I like the I like the one the dog picking up the shit. That's pretty cool. Have you seen that one? Yeah. Oh, you can <laughs> you have endless like you have just endless videos of of dogs doing things and uh, but that that's my point. Like you cannot make a dog. Like you can make it, but you can see if the dog enjoys or the dog does not. You can like you you don't need to be a dog trainer to see yeah. if the dog yeah. wants to do or the dog is made to do it. Yeah, yeah any, 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 of, any of the videos or the behaviors that I'm doing with my dogs is like, I need to be the one who, who I don't need people to tell me that the dog is not having fun. I know that the dog is not having fun. So if I see that, that the dog is not enjoying it for whatever, like I said, I move to something else. Right. Or I try to figure out a way to, to motivate him that it's okay to enjoy that that what I'm teaching and it's fine and it's and it's fun. So, well, you're for sure thing. huge inspiration for a lot of people watching, and and ultimately, I think it's a very very good contribution to make to inspire people to do things with their dogs. Dogs mm-hmm. want to do things, you know that. There is no one dog that's happy just sitting on the couch and walking around the block in the morning and in the evening. That's that's just not. There is no meaning in their lives like that, you know. That's, and that's, and I I know a lot of people look up to you, so it's a very cool thing what you're doing, and we keep watching you. That's all I'm saying. So keep keep it up. Keep it going, and then for everybody out there. Keep trying, keep going, keep training, keep training and enjoying doing it. That's that's the main thing. That's just cool. Man. There's no reason why to rush it. There's no reason why to uh, there's no reason why to think that you cannot do it. That's probably one of the one of the biggest uh, advice that I can give because I get that a lot. A lot of people tell me there's no way I can do that. Only you can do it. Bullshit. You can do it. Yeah. You, just, anybody can do it. It's just a matter of focusing and doing it the right way. And Not sometimes you need help and but but you offer yeah. help, you offer advice and and you start with little things, just like you know, a kid that you're gonna teach skiing. You you don't put him on the black slope, you know, you little increments yeah. of challenges. Yeah. It all has the beginning, the middle, the end, everything. Right. You push to the end, uh, maybe you're not going to do it. Maybe you were right from the beginning. But if you have the patience and the ideas and learn how to do it, it's doable. It's all doable. And uh, most of all, what is most important is to have the right dog. The, 
to teach the right dog to have the right attitude and, and, and have the right bonding and, and communication with the dog. And then it's all possible. If you don't, because it is, there are some people that they really don't have communication with the dog and they want to accomplish certain things and the dog is in la la land or, or not paying attention because they're not connected. You know, you have to connect before you, you can do. That's what I'm saying. The, that's where the, the, the Petrix actually force you to challenge yourself how to interact in a very cool way with your dog. And they understand, they understand almost like humans. It's really incredible what they can do. So, I mean, I get surprised all the time. I've been doing it for many years, and sometimes it just surprised me how fast they catch on to new stuff that, that like, like for example, the batting. Let me give you an example. You see monkey hit the bat yeah. with the ball. Yeah. Five minutes. Wow. That's all he took. Because he had separate behaviors already, right? Yeah, yeah, but he, had, he has the bat, and he wants the ball, okay? So I started messing with the ball with a little string, and he wants to drop the bat to get the ball. And I said, no, you don't drop the bat. He knows that he has to have it, so he's getting upset, and he's getting frustrated, and he starts shaking his head, and he, that's what I want. So when he starts shaking his head, I reward him. He's like, yeah, that's what I want. No, no toys, no, 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 uh, yeah. no food or nothing. It's just the, the, the ball with the, the string that I have here. And I kept throwing it at him and messing with him. And then he's like, Paul, it hits it. And yeah, that's what I want. And then he do it again and again and again. And it's just. And the next thing five, you know, it's like, let's five go. Five minutes, he was hitting a big ball. Wow. That's all he did. Wow. Five minutes. He was like, and it's like, wow, that's awesome. And then you take it to a next, next level. You know, then you start doing it from the distance stay on your place and then you take it to an next level where you can do it much better so but the initial the initial understanding is like that so if you don't try you don't know that's, that's how it goes so next time i'm coming you're not gonna come to florida obviously but when i get to california i'm gonna check with you and stop by Let we, check we, with me we'll go it, have dinner or something it's time to do that it's time. yeah it's time. I might go to Florida. Oh, you might go to you. Wait, but you're in Northern Florida, right? Yeah, I'm in near Tampa. Okay. I'm oh, between, I got, I got yeah. family in Tampa, actually. Yeah. I am? Yeah. Well, I'm in mm -hmm. any time, but I have a feeling that it's going to be me coming to LA. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Come on down. Cool, my man. Thank you for, for the conversation. Hopefully, that was enjoyable for everybody. And uh, yeah, go check Omar and his dogs it's absolutely amazing the interaction and the feeling that he has with dogs it, it's a must see so thank you my friend talk to you later and uh keep training okay yes we go back to training that's what we do that's what we do <laughs> okay. take care man